Hi guys. Oh, get loud on the speakers there. Cool. We've got it here. Let's have a look. Hi Akmuthin, hi Akmuthin, Andy, Amrath, Ian, Music Link, Steps. Nice to see Steps. Tech TV. Hi guys. <laughs> You've been waiting for this, haven't you, Steps? Are you all set up now, by the way? Did you get your. I saw you got the device debugger working, I think. Is that what this music is? I've got to say, I've never actually played it on the C64, so... Okay, so this is uh, a Patreon request stream, so we're going to do uh, some debugger stuff. Um, so we can all learn a bit about the debugger, I'm still learning myself, so it's, it's good practice. Get okay, this the right size. That right. Um, and we're going to look at Armour Line by uh, Cyberline Systems. Very, very good game. Um, probably one of my most played shooting up games. Hopefully, this works. I did try it earlier today on my Mac, so I'm hoping it. Yep, seems to be working. So, this is just the D64 file, the first one I found on uh, CSDB. Yes, Andy, I did notice that. Uh, somebody posted something on Twitter today, I think it was BuzzClick, um, about using an older version of Jarpad. Um, I don't know if the new one's out yet, but apparently the new one will support Mac as well, which is really good, because it's one of, one of the reasons I've struggled to do stuff on my uh, Mac at work, so I'm good. Good to actually have a Mac tool that can do these things. I can play around with some char sets here and there. Okay, so so those who aren't familiar with Armalite, it's a uh, it's a very very good uh, shoot mod game. Actually, yeah, Robin Levy replied to my Twitter post today. Actually, uh, hi Dom, hi Richmond Mike, hi Doctor Mizdler, Mizdler. Um, yeah, he replied. He said he'd have to tune in for this, so maybe we'll get lucky and we'll pop in. It'll be a bit of pressure, although we're not. He's the artist, not the coder. So if Dan Phillips drops in, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be uh, a little out of my depth, I think. Um, but there's still plenty to dissect with the graphics as well. So let's load this up. So I think this was a request from James on Patreon. He was interested in, uh, I think specifically to do with the sprites, so things like collision and multiplex and stuff. And this, is, this game is well known for having one of the best multiplexes of, of the time. I think they actually redid it for the, the Championship Competition Edition. Um, well, I'm not seeing any sprites. A few sprites on the screen. Ah, there we go. So as you can see, they've got... Well, let's pause it actually and count. 3, 6, 7, 8. And 14... Anyone. I count 24 or so sprites there, which is pretty good. Um, I've seen more, but I mean, for the time, this is well, what's that? 1988. That's that's quite a lot. And, and sprite multiplexing is a complicated topic with lots of different ways to do it. Um, but we'll, in fact, let's have a look. Let's have a look how they're doing this one. Um, Control Shift F5 takes you into the Vic view. We can move the, the raster around and see what's happening in each raster. And you can see it's drawing eight sprites. And then as the raster line moves down, it's moving some of the sprites and redrawing them at different positions. Interestingly as well, it looks like they're changing the multicolor as well on the background. So I would have thought, looking at this, I would have thought this would have been 
a multicolored character set but using the color ram to change the colors but they're not actually it's all one if you look here it's all one color and they're just changing uh, D022 and D023 D, uh, sorry D021 and D022 they're changing the background color which means the this black space here is actually full characters if we look in uh, which one is it now remember which one I've really got a there we go yeah so it looks like they're using reverse characters so there's a lot of uh, <laughs> Hello hacker. Hey. <laughs> you get this a lot in some games actually. Oh yeah, sorry, let me turn the music down. I usually have it a bit lower than this. There we go. I like to have it there as a little bit of background to the videos. It, it kind of fills some of the dead space that I do create now and again. But um, yeah, is that better? No problem. Um, yeah, so you see this a lot in games actually, they they add little messages for people that, that go snooping through the code. I don't know how well you can see that on stream. Um, checking the window now, yeah, you can, you can see it says hello hacker there. Um, and yeah, they've got the characters here. And you see they're in reverse, so, so what we're seeing in this window is, is actually holes in the in the character set um, with what looks like some some of it filled in with multicolors and so they're changing the background uh, changing the background as we go down so here the background's blue and then green and it creates this nice nice effect um, actually yeah it makes sense you can see stripes through the Things. So you get lots of different colours um, using raster splits. So raster splits is something that we'll um, that we'll go through at some point in a future stream. Um, we've we've kind of touched on it slightly in the first game stream, um, where we used um, we, we used a latch on kind of one line of the uh, the raster just to time everything to one frame. But we'll we'll look at very specific. Uh, using specific raster interrupts to do things at very specific points on the screen and you need that for multiplexing as well but the way the multiplexing works is when the raster's at the top of the screen up here somewhere it will draw the first eight sprites that it needs to draw um, you can draw less I mean I in, in some of my games I tend to keep the, the player sprites separate from the from the multiplex and just draw six or seven sprites um, but here they're, they're drawing all eight, so you can see eight sprites here in the in the middle. Um, and then once the sprites, uh, once at least one of the sprites is drawn, so this one on the this one here, once the raster line gets past the bottom of that, you'll see it now starts it starts to draw the next sprite in the list. So the two that we've gone past now get redrawn in a different location, and every time we pass the bottom of a sprite it gets redrawn in its new location further down the screen so you can see that happening there and the reason for that is when you draw a sprite um, once you set a sprite's Y position and it begins rendering that's it you can't change its Y position so you, you have to wait for the ratter to get back past it before you can move it if I was to so, so this sprite here um, that I'm centered on here if I was to change its Y position at this point you wouldn't see anything happen until I got past here and so, so it's only when the raster gets past the bottom of the, the sprites that they move. Um, I'm interested to know, actually, let's try something. If we, we bring up the sprite registers, so if we go into uh, this mode, so these all these sprites are the same color. So the way the sprite multiplexes work is when it needs to draw the new sprite, it it's, sets the new properties for each. Um, sprite uh, when it needs to re redraw so so if, if we're drawing this one um, and it's suddenly going to become this one then we need to change its x and y position and we need to change its frame so that it can draw a new one uh, some multiplexes will change the color as well and that's what i want to check because these are all the same color so it might be that they're not reusing the colors because obviously the less you change uh, per frame oh, 
but I did not want to do that and I can't remember what was there now. Oh, damn it, I did this last time. This might crash now, but... Um, yeah, the less you change per frame, then the, 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 the closer together you can have the sprites, because obviously anything you do um, takes time. So the more you do, the, the bigger the gap you need to have between the bottom of a sprite and, the, and when it's when the new one can be shown. So I'm changing all the colors of the sprite registers here. So if the multiplexer is using, is changing the colors, these will snap back to pink. If it's not, then they'll stay multicolor and you'll probably see some flickering as they, as they shuffle around, so. And it seemed to change some. Has it changed them all? No, it's only changed one, that's weird. Am I doing the right ones? Two, seven. Yeah, that should be changing them all. Okay, that's odd. So it seems to be changing the, the colours of one. Right, but not them all. Interesting. But that that will be an optimization that they've done. Um, yeah, that's a word to get that I know, as tight as they have. I mean, this this is a very tight formation for this many sprites. It's one of the things that makes this game very interesting. Um, Okay, so that's the basics of multiplexing. As I say, we'll go into that um, probably not on the next stream. Uh, we've got, I think the next game stream we're going to look at implementing player control, and possibly if we have time, some collision. Um, uh, but certainly sometime after that, we'll have to do a sprite multiplexer. Eight sprites just isn't enough. So, so the Commodore has eight sprites, um, as you can see here. Actually, it is changing the colour, and we see here that all the colours are different. I don't know why they're not displaying on the screen. Interesting. But they're definitely changed here. So you have eight hardware sprites, and that's just not enough, really, to do things. Especially in a game like this, when you've got bullets and stuff. Which you'll see, I'm pretty sure they're going to use character sprites for bullets. Um, so let's start the game. Right. Joystick controls on. It's a very, very nice game. Very well made, very... I can't remember how to get that, there we go. Very well put together, lots of cool weapons. Oh, actually I can see something interesting already, right, so let's pause. So you'll notice that this is using uh, the border down here. And if you guys can see that. I think I think most of the the, the music, um, like the Sid artists of the time, wrote most of their own routines. So they had to know a bit of six five zero two anyway to be able to to do it. They didn't have the the kind of music tools that we have now. Everything was done in code. So I think I think they had to kind of know a bit of six five zero two, and some of them some of them were very very good at it. Um, yeah, so uh, looking at this, so an interesting thing about this game is it's using the whole screen. So if we if I put it into Vic mode, you see here it's using from the very top to the very bottom. It's using all twenty five rows of the screen. Um, we've also got we've only got eight sprites on the screen there at the moment in the main screen. But you see as I hover hover over the bottom, the control panel at the the, the hood at the bottom is also made out of sprites. So this is a great technique for um, maximizing the, the space on your screen. Uh, and to do that, you so normally you would have a border here and you wouldn't be able to put anything in here. You, you can put sprites there, but you wouldn't see them. They'd be hidden by the border. But there is a, uh, a switch in the VIC. I think it's at D0, uh, let me check actually where it is. D011, I think. Yeah, D0, D011. So, This register here, it's used for scrolling the screen vertically and, and setting some uh, bitmap modes and, and reading um, the bit eight of the, the raster line, but it's this bit here that's very interesting. So if you're doing a vertical scroller, you have to switch the screen into 24 rows because you'll have one row that's kind of flickering between on and off as you scroll. And so they provide a way on the VIC to hide that row and, and create 24 row screen. Um, 
what people learned quite quickly was that if you change, if, when you get down to this point of the screen, uh, round about here somewhere, I think it is on the very last line, or it's, it's somewhere within this character, uh, within this last row, if you change to 24 rows, um, then it's already gone past the point where it would have started drawing the border. So you switch into 24 uh, character mode, and then when it gets to here, where it would start drawing the character, uh, the border in 25, in 25 row mode, it no longer does because it thinks it's in 24 mode so it doesn't draw the border and it basically opens this border and this border up here and then as long as you set it back to once you get somewhere up here you set it back to 25 rows again the middle of the screen always shows as 25 rows but you end up with open borders which means you put sprites down there quite a common technique you you'll have seen it in many many games um creatures is a good example they use and the creatures too in the um, in the torture screen, there's there's a sun I think, and some birds flying around at the top up here, and then the score and lives is down at the bottom and the bonus panel. So, um, so that's down there. We can probably find that in the code actually. Let's have a look. So uh, let's go into this mode. In my chat up just in case you guys are asking stuff. Yeah, trickery indeed. No, it applies to both. So, so what happens is, is when the when the Vic gets down to to this row, these two rows here, depending on which mode it's in, it begins to draw the border, and it will continue to draw the border until it no longer needs to draw the border, which is up here. Um, so, if if you get past this like row twenty four, and then you set it into twenty four character mode, when it should start drawing the border at line twenty five. It no longer does because it would have started here instead. It, it, you're basically tricking it into thinking it started drawing the border. Uh, and so it opens it up and it opens it all the way up to here as well. There's a similar trick with the um, with the side borders as well, but that has to be done on every row as you go down, and that's that's a lot more difficult to do. Um, I've I've never actually done it. I'm sure it I'm sure it, you know, there's there's some easy code out there to show you how to do it, but I've never actually done it. But I know it's it's a similar trick, but using the sideboard doesn't have to be done on every line. Yeah, I mean, you can just about fit some sprites in it. It depends on your display output as well, because some displays will show a little bit more or a little bit less, depending on what the overscan settings are. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, generally it's used for kind of heads up displays and things like that. Some people um, will. No, uh, I mean, for instance, in uh, some games where you might, like a single screen arcade game where you might drop off the bottom of the screen and appear at the top, it's a good way of kind of maximizing your area here um, by allowing you to kind of drop a player sprite into the border and out through the top here. Um, but the, 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 the hood panel is usually what you see in the, in the border here. And then what they do is there'll be some code somewhere which draws to these sprites. So what we've we got in there, we've got, um, I'm not sure what that is, I think this is the weapon type, you've got a score, um, again I don't know what that is, I can't remember, it's been so long since I played it, uh, number of lives, I think that's like a power up level or something, I'll show it here, yeah, power up level here, uh, number of lives, um, let's see if we can find where it's opening that border, so let's uh, look in here. So we're looking for access to, in fact, let's do it through. So I've been trying to figure out these breakpoints. Um, so I've learned that you can look for any change to a value just by doing less than or equal to FF. And now that'll pick up any change on that and it will break on it. So if we start again, immediately we get a break here. And if we look at the raster line, FA, so this is, if I turn the raster on, you can see it's down at the bottom here. But this is probably the line that's opening the border. If I was to change that and, and change that to, if I just change this byte here, so let's find it in the in the memory map. Here, eight, seven, eight, seven, eight D, eight D. D zero one one. So if I just change that to two zero, so it just changes the border color instead. Um, we should hopefully see the the sprites disappear at the bottom. Uh, 
Oh, we've got a couple of places where it's doing it. So let's have a look. We've got FC, FC. Okay, so let's change it there as well. So AO93, 011. There we go. So we change that one as well. Yeah, there we go. So we've now, we've removed that. So that was the code that does it. Um, as you can see, it's now we, we, all we're doing is changing the border color instead. So what, what they're doing, you see this black line here. So at some point they're setting this to zero. If we look at the memory map again, by setting it to zero at that exact point, it sets it into, so all these would be zero, which means, I mean, it's kind of irrelevant what the rest of them are because it's only set for two lines. Um, it's here. It's only set for two lines, so it really doesn't matter what they set to. Oops. Uh, but it sets it into 24 row mode. So it sets it to 24 row mode, then a couple of raster lines later, two, two or so later, it sets it into whatever this is. Um, which is, it's like a light gray or something. So it's zero B, probably probably the default, um, which if we look is, default is one B. So they're probably setting it back to one B again, which would set it back to 25 row. But at that point, it's already decided not to draw the border. So it leaves them open. It means that everything else is drawn correctly. So just for these two lines here, it's just enough to open the border. So quite a simple trick, but um, very effective for doing things. So let me put that back. Oh, can I remember where the other one was? It was around here somewhere. D0. Oh man, it was around here. Where was it? There it is. Cool. Oh, game over anyway. Okay. So you can see already, just with the intro, uh, we've got a sprite multiplexer. We're using um, raster color splits on the background to create this nice logo. Um, and in the game itself, we're using... Can I do anything here? Am I still on pause? Here I am. And in the game itself, they're opening the border at the bottom. Oh, was it not starting? Have I still got it? Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, I broke the sprite when we played it. really like there was a gap there. So let's have a look what else they've got in this. Uh, I do need to turn this off now because it's going to do that every time. Okay, so another thing you can see is this uh, scrolling star background. We've got some almost static stars. They are moving a little bit uh, with a layer of stars above them as well. And then we do get... Try and get... So I actually press fire. And then we get actual character graphics coming in. So let's pause it there. Let's have a look at what's going on in the... So you can see this is the character screen here. I've come down to the bottom so all the sprites are hidden. Um, you can see the stars themselves and the background. The, the map itself is all drawn with characters. And what we should see, because this, this view doesn't show any of the scroll values so you won't see the screen smooth scrolling like you do up here you'll see it moving eight pixels at a time and we should get a better idea of what's going on with those character actually can i slow that down pretty sure there is a slow down but let me just find the manual again So what they've done with this game is rather than try and shift the colour around at the same time, everything is the same colour, so you see it's all this shade of blue. But what they quite smartly do as you go through, I'll leave it running while I find this uh, code, so hopefully I'll get through without dying. No. <laughs> okay, might have to set some infinite lives or something. Um, what they do is uh, there's certain areas where there's a gap in the in the scenery and as as the gap fills the entire screen they change the multicolor and it becomes the, the map becomes a different color so it creates a kind of 
nice colourful feel to the levels without actually having to use multicolour. So let's leave that on while I command. I'll actually play some so you can see it. That's it. I've also put a link in um, the Discord, links and resources. I've changed the link for the debugger because uh, uh, the original one point to a specific version. Um, this is now using this is now uh, pointing to SourceForge, so you get the latest latest version all the time. I haven't noticed much difference in it, but it's always good to get the latest. You know, it's a joystick limit emulation speed. Okay, I think this is just yeah, it's just warped mode. Okay, all right, let's let's play a little bit and show you the effects that I'm on about. Oh, that's Sam's journey. Oh yeah, I was looking at Sam's journey. I've just loaded a snapshot for it. How many of you actually played this then back in the day? Is the game most of you are familiar with? I guess anybody who had a kind of Commodore around the late 80s would have known this game. But it was a very, very good game. All right, it's too much joystick. Let's put it in this mode because that's. Oh god, I've done it again. <laughs> okay, I, I'm going to save a snapshot for Armalite so that doesn't keep happening. Uh, quick snapshot, quick store snapshot, shift and control. Right, okay. Yeah, Thalamus did make some amazing games. Um, I think pretty much every game they released was special in its own little way. Um, certainly, I certainly rushed out to get the Thalamus games when they came out. It was kind of a mark of quality that you, you knew you were going to get something decent. Right, okay, let's save this as a snapshot so I don't keep doing that. Right, there we go. Right. F1, that's it, right. So you see it starts as blue, and then as I go through, you'll see the, the background change colour. But there'll be a gap, and then it'll change colour. We'll look at the bullets in a minute as well, and, and, and how the scrolling's actually working. Oh, that's right, you have to shoot those. See, there's a gap there, and you see the stars change to green. That's because they've changed the. Um, let's pause it again. Go back into Vic mode. You'll see they've changed D022 here, and that's the that's the first multicolor, um, and that's changed everything to green, including the stars in the background. And this means they don't have to scroll the color ram. Um, this the color ram in here is probably the same everywhere. In fact, it must be because the. We've got grey, green, white and black as the background. It looks like they may not even be using the multicolor. The uh, second color. Oh no, that's that's the border, isn't it? Yeah, so black is the color. So they've set black everywhere. Um, yeah, cool. Apart from snare. I play snare. It rings a bell. I probably did play it if it was Thalamus. I mean, for me, my favourites were definitely the Creatures games. Um, I really liked um, Hunter's Moon, uh, this, Armalite as well. Um, yeah, I, I just really like their stuff. Really, really like their stuff. You see, they've, they've set everything to green in the back in the, in the multicolour now. So let's take a look at what's going on with the, the background. So let's compare the speed of, say, the point here 
this star here and watch what's happening. So it's, you see that? So this this star here, which is a grey colour, um, stayed still while this moved. And the way they're doing that is um, when they when they draw the screen. I mean, I don't know which order they're exactly they're doing it in, um, but when they draw it, they'll be drawing it in three passes. So they'll do one pass for the static stars, which never move. Um, one pass for the stars, which move. So these green ones. Uh, so they draw all the grey grey ones first. Uh, they could do this in any order. I'm not sure which order they're doing it in. But if it was me, I would do the grey stars first. Then I would do the green ones, which every frame I would move a little less than the main background, but but actually move them. Um, and then this, which uh, the the main background, which is moving at, at twice the speed as as these stars. And the way they make them look like they're moving independently if I show you so you see this green star is in the the top left corner of this character can we zoom in on that uh, it doesn't really give you okay well you see the carrot you see the the green star is in the top right corner uh, top left corner and as we if you keep your eye on them you'll see that they they move backwards and forwards through these squares and that's because as the screen is hardware scrolling a couple of pixels in one direction in order to make these appear like they're moving slower the the character the data in this character is is rolled in the opposite direction um, to, to create the effect that in, in some cases that they're completely static um, and in other cases that they're scrolling at a slower speed um, quite a common common trick it's used uh, it's used for doing parallax effects um, quite often in backgrounds. I use it in Dot 2, it's used in Torokun and Creatures, um, and obviously this as well. Moved on to the me and go around then. I did get the uh, Hunter's Moon remake. It's very good actually, it's very nice. I've got the. Uh, hang on. <laughs> I've got the, the cartridge version. Um, it's a nice quality cartridge. It's on a Gmod cartridge. And the, uh, I don't know if you can see that, signed by uh, Martin Walker on the thing. Quite pleased with that. Uh, it's a nice, nice piece of uh, modern retro gaming collectible. Collectibles, but yeah, it's, it's a very good game. Very good game. They've added a, a level level editor, um, and uh, backers got to some of the backers got to create levels for for the game as well. Why is that not closing? What have I done there? Should go on the top and close. If I put that on top or something. if you close the box properly. Yeah, I missed out on the Amiga generation. I was, um, I kind of, I got one in the end, but it was much, much later, much later on. Um, I got, I got an Amiga probably in the mid nineties. And by then, of course, everybody was moving on to PCs. So <laughs> um, I was always quite late to the party. I think that's why I, I kind of learned so much about the systems that I got because I had to make the most of them. Okay, so let's have a look. So, so we know the background is probably made up of three separate layers that, uh, that have been drawn. Let's have a look at the uh, enemy. Oh, you can see this sprite multiplex are doing stuff there as well. So we've got, we've got the main ship on here and we've got six enemies there and then two additionals there. So that's, that's ten, 10 sprites on the screen. Excuse me, ten sprites on the screen um, in the main playfield, and then the eight at the bottom. So that's eighteen sprites on the screen. There is is pretty impressive. Uh, some games were absolutely insane. Some, some 
uh, like uh, Turrican was one that was absolutely crazy. They just had so many things going on on the screen, especially on the big boss fights. Okay, let's take a look at the bullets. So if I shoot a little bit from four, so we've got a couple of bullets. You can see there again, they're also characters. But the way these will work um, is they move so fast they they don't have to do they don't have to counter the uh, the, the scrolls. So like the stars, the data in the stars gets rolled to the to the right as the screen scrolls to the left. Um, these won't have to. They move so fast across the screen. It's pointless trying to trying to do anything to counter the scroll. You'll see even if I, if I advance a frame, they're always exactly the same. They're always just slap bang in the middle. You know, the data hasn't changed at all. And again, this is this will be drawn as another layer over the top. So whenever the screen has to scroll, these will probably be removed. The the whole screen will probably be redrawn afresh. Um, or at least, at least these will be deleted and the screen will be shifted to the left. Um, but the, these will definitely have to be cleared and redrawn every frame as well. Um, and the great thing with character sprites is there's no limits. You can fill an entire row with them. So like with with, with the Commodore sprites, you can only have eight at a time, which means at any one raster line there can only be eight. If you have a ninth one on the row, it will start flickering, disappearing. Um, in fact, you can't even display it. You, you, you would have to do some trickery to kind of move the sprite here over to here at just the right time. It it's, can be done, but it's very, 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 very difficult. Um, whereas with character sprites, you don't have that limit, so they're perfect for bullets. And they move so fast that you don't need the kind of the pixel precision that you do for, for sprites as well. You need to plan your draw order carefully using more than sprites yeah so the oh, hey hitch <laughs> it's the beard what makes me sexy gotta have a beard if you stream commodore it's essential we need to get we need to get Hayes to grow one uh yeah so you you make a, a sort routine to sort the sprites so what you will do is you will take the Y positions of the sprites because it's the Y position that's the important thing. It's the, as I showed, as you go past the bottom of a sprite, you see the next one. As soon as I go past the bottom of this sprite here, it starts redrawing in, in a new position with a new frame. But these two sprites get redrawn and reused. So it's important to, to know the Y order of the sprites. Um, there's plenty of routines out there to do that. Um, I think the one I've used the most is from uh, the game Swift. Um, I can when we when we get into sprite multiplexing um, on the arcade game stream, um, then we'll start. I'll, I'll I'll introduce you to some sort of routines. You can roll your own, but to be honest with you, there's there's been so much research into into the most efficient way of doing these sorts for for things. You may as well use one that's already been written. I, I use the Swift sort. There's also the Ocean sort as well, um, which is very popular. Actually, I think I use a hybrid of the two, um, but I'll, I'll explain that in more detail when we get to it. But yeah, that's that's the most important thing. How many cycles do you have per raster? Um, that's an interesting one. It depends. So on a PAL machine, you have 63 cycles per raster, and on at best uh, 63 cycles per raster, and on an NTSC machine, you have 64, I think, or it might be 60. No, I think it's 64. Um, it's either 64 or 65, I don't know, I don't pay too much attention to um, to NTSC machines unfortunately. Um, just oh, I try to make sure my games actually work on them, but if I'm doing fancy tricks then I tend not to think about them too much. That changes with bad lines, um, so uh, you, you see how the screen is split up into rows of characters, every time the VIC gets to the beginning of a new line, it has to go and fetch that data from the VIC registers. Um, so if I, I'm very careful, you see here if you've got this marker bad line, very careful, I might be able to stop on one. Nope, oh, you can see it flashing as I go up and down. So they happen once every eight raster lines. Um, and what happens there is it gets the, the raster goes across the screen, it gets to about here. Uh, and then no more code, can, no no more of your code can run because the CPU is busy fetching stuff from the VIC, so they're called bad lines. 
um, they can take at least 40 cycles off you, uh, sometimes more. The number of cycles it takes um, to off you for each bad line depends on whether you've got sprites on that line or not, because it's in addition to in addition to fetching the, the character data, it also has to fetch the sprite data as well. And it's not very predictable, unfortunately. Um, different combinations of sprites do different numbers, so sprite 1 and 5 might be better than using sprite 1, 2 and 3, for instance. Um, there's some really good documentation out there. I will um, I'll try and dig that out, actually, and put it in links and resources. It's, it's definitely worth a read if you're interested in exactly how the Vic works and what, what the difference between a bad line is and not. Um, at some point, again in the in the game stream, we'll we'll look at bad lines because bad lines are really good for um, doing lots of demo tricks like FLD or um, uh, VSP scrolling. So there are lots of the fancy tricks you see in demos or for games, um, they they probably utilise bad lines and, and tricks that utilise kind of forcing the Vic into a bad line um, to do certain things. But we'll we'll touch on that a bit later. I'd like to go, let's dump the C6 for head for Amiga. Yeah, no, you're alright. Too many bits in the Amiga. Far too many bits. Okay, so what were we looking at? Oh yeah, we were looking at these characters. Um yeah, so so this is this is why this game has got so many bullets. I mean if I if I start it up again. Oh see, I pressed the pressed the wrong button again, but this time it's loaded the game. So if I if I I start the game up and get some special weapons. You'll see why having character sprites is, is really useful. Try and stop it on a laser beam. Ah, oh, damn it. Oh. Come on. I suck at this game. Let's go. There we go. Oh, you s there we go. Right. Try and unpause it and get into a decent position. See, they're so fast you can you can barely pause on it. Okay, that's. It's not great, but let's have a look at that. See, you see again, they're, they're just single characters. Um, two bullets in one character. It's exactly the same character for both. They've just offset them slightly to make it look a bit more uh, kind of random, the way it's shooting. In your previous Thrust Dice Set video, that uses characters for most. Well, that's a good point, actually, Steps. We didn't look into detail. I didn't see the sprite... Um, sprite boxes around the bullets so I'd assume yes they were using character sprites for bullets. It's quite a common thing to do because it characters the bullets can very quickly eat away at your your multiplexer kind of limits so if you and, and they generally move fast so it makes sense to use character sprites where you can. So here we've got uh, what looks like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten bullets oh actually more than 11 12 looks like we've got 12 extra bullets on the screen but what it's actually drawing is six characters um actually it's drawing seven because these are separated um and you can see when i play if i if i play really fast and try and tap the buttons and actually click on the screen i mean look at that that's a lot of bullets going on and it gets worse in this game as well because you've also got this drone at the top so that drone's copying some of the abilities that i've got Really hard to play on keys as well, I've got to say. I think you'd be kind of hard pushed to find a game that didn't use character sprites. Actually, watching Hayes tonight, he was playing um, the first game he was playing, Navy Seals. And there was a weapon, I think it was some kind of rocket launcher or something, and when he fired it, it gave off a big explosion. And that explosion was fully in characters. You could see it draw all. You know this this big kind of six by six block of characters on the screen for the explosion, and it worked quite well. I mean, it had a bit of black border around it, but it it looked fairly decent. 
Ah, that's interesting. See how it's moving the X position of the sprites when I'm there. The sprites at the bottom where the borders supposedly open. Yeah. Okay. The flamethrower as well. Yeah, it would make sense actually. I think interestingly creatures didn't. Creatures did use sprites for, for the weapons. Um, but I think that was because it was a bit of a slower paced game and you couldn't fire very many. You could only ever fire like two two bullets at a time. You had to wait for them, one of them to disappear before you could fire another one. And they also followed some quite unique paths, whereas the bullets in here, they, they, they follow basically rows and columns. And even when bullets kind of go diagonally, they tend to follow, you know, straight diagonals, 45 degree diagonals. Um, but in creatures, they had like swirling uh, and drooping weapons and weapons that kind of drooped upwards with kind of very smooth paths. Um, that wouldn't have worked very well with characters. Uh, and also the flame flamethrower in that as well. That was, I think that was sprites as well. I'd, I'd be hard pushed to believe that was characters. Maybe that's a, another game we should dissect at some point. Okay. Um, well, let's let's use what we've learned about um, the sprites in the border down here to work out where it's getting the lives from and see if we can just give ourselves infinite lives. I'm going to do this, try and do this on every stream because I think it's an interesting exercise. Um, this is where you hacking kind of begins and you start to learn how to read other people's code and figure out what's going on. I think it's a good exercise to try and give yourself infinite lives in a game. Um, so rather than go... So normally what we would do with this is you would probably load this up using the action replay and you'd use the, the built-in kind of cheat finder function. Um, and that would do, you know, it would do this... Uh, not that one. No, no, go away. Yeah, it would do this hunt through memory um, for a particular value. And then it would record all these values. And then you would start again and you'd put the new... You'd lose a life and put the new value in and it would whittle them down until you found one. Um, I've not found a way of doing that in the disassembler. Um, but I don't mind because I think this gives us an interesting approach to finding these lives. But we know they're sprites, so um, let's start the game and pause. So we've got this sprite down here. If we hover over it, in fact we don't have to hover over it, it's up here. So, just put the... Look at that. Now we can see the sprites here. So it's in... It's this bit here, so it's in the fourth sprite along. That's right, three in the list. Or 640. So this is where the data is stored for that. So if we go to memory and go to 4640. Oops, not in there, in here. And we keep an eye on this when we lose a life. So I'm gonna not score any points because it was some score values up here as well. But I'm gonna lose a life, and what we should see is some of these values flicker, um, I think they'll go yellow or red um, to mean they're being updated, so let's try that. So let's not pick anything up, don't want to get any score, just want to die. There we go. I completely missed that. Let's die again. Right, I need to not watch the screen and watch the memory map instead. Yep, so, so around this kind of area they were changing. So what we can do, I'm going to keep my eye on this value here. I'm going to see if that value changes. So it's 0, 03 at the moment. So let's crash into something. No, but these ones did. Keep an eye on them ones. That one there, there we go. Right, I think we found one. Yep, yeah, so that value there changed. So 4667. So what we can do is so we go into here and delete that one and put 4667. 
and that's equal to ff so now anytime that is written it will it will stop and it will show me where that's being written from so we're fine at the moment i hope this works anyway i've been practicing with these these breakpoints to try and get a feel for them and it's not changed why is it not changed Damn, I can't see which values are changing, is it? I see them flicker very quickly and then they go off. It looks like that one was changing. What's that? Oh, a raid. Hi, Haze. Thank you for the raid. 26 people, wow. We're looking at Armalite. And hi, everybody that's come along uh, with Haze. How is the rest of the gaming? I think I left as you were. I think you were still playing Navy Seals when I left. Hi Carla, hey Peppy, hey Reggae Pirate. Hi Rinelli, lots of hype, thank you. Oh, that's a good point. I got affiliate as well this week, guys. Thanks to your um, Persistent watching of me. I don't know why you you enjoy it so much, but I'm very grateful for it. I have submitted a new emote, but it's not there anymore. I changed it the other night to get rid of the border. So how's it going? It's going really good, thank you. We're um, we're we're looking into Armalite. We've had a look at the sprite multiplexer. We've shown how that's kind of doing its job. We've looked at the way the scroll is working. Um, we've looked at how the border is opened to display the, the sprites at the bottom. Right now. Um, yeah, so you can see at the bottom, oops, at the bottom of the screen here. So this is your normal character screen. Pardon me, I've been drinking too much of this Sprite, it's very gassy. Should be drinking wine, wine's much easier. Um, yeah, so you see at the bottom of the screen here, they display the hood with Sprite, so we just went over how that actually works, what what's going on to make that happen. Um, it's quite an interesting point. Uh, we'll, we'll probably do something like that in the games at some point. Yeah, the docker mote's not there, I don't know why, to be honest. Also played some other 16 combat compact games. Dice go is probably hand down winner to be honest. Damn. Yeah, I'm actually very impressed with uh, with uh, uh, with uh, uh, dice go. I think it's very interesting. I did resubmit a new emote. Yes. Oh, thanks for the bits, Cola. First bits. Thanks. Cheers. Name there is no emote. I don't know. I think it's still pending at the moment. So. Um. Yeah. Yeah, dice skate is very good. I do, I do like that. I think that's uh, that's definitely in with a with a good shout. It needs to be checked for gasm face. <laughs> I do feel like uh, I do feel like these emotes are, are probably designed to to test the the, the Twitch kind of reviewers to see if they they will accept them or not. Uh, okay, so what were we doing? We. We were, we were, damn, what were we doing? Oh yeah, we were trying to, so we, we've looked at a few things now. Um, I've realized I'm never going to get to the end of this level without cheat, so we're going to make an infinite lives cheat. Um, so we were just looking at this memory location where this sprite is drawn down here. So there's a sprite here, which is this sprite, 4640 uh, in memory. Uh, and so we were just watching that in the... Uh, so it's from here to here basically this is all the data that goes into that sprite um. <laughs> oh cheers guys wow cool thanks for the bits uh, Acma Finn and thanks for the bit uh, Domadags I still don't know how to say your name Domadags I just keep calling you Dom mostly so I hope you don't mind that I need to make some nice fancy alerts as well, I think. I should do that. 
This is a C64 debugger by uh, Samar Productions, one of the uh, demo houses. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's a, it's a graphical disassembly. It lets you see the state of the um, the memory and the disassembly. You get a visual representation of of the character data. If it if the memory was character data, what it would look like. Um, in fact, we can see here the sprites. But the bit that we're looking for is is actually this here. I think I think that's the three here. Yeah, looks like it. Um, it would be nice if I could click on here and see where that is in this list, but it doesn't seem to let me do that. Um, and then you get a kind of overview of the memory as a whole, um, color coded for whether things have been uh, written to or read from or both. And then you get other things as well. So you get um, yeah, more in detail sprite kind of view. There's uh, an actual editor where you can go in and change the, the character set. There's also uh, SID registers as well. So if I start playing, you'll see um, you see the SID register. You can see the waves that are going on in them. It's a bit slow in this mode, so I tend not to use this. But you can see the waves that are going on. So we've got what look like square waves in these. Um, and if I die and go to the main menu, you can see the music. You'll see it going with the music as well. Where am I? to not be dying and there I am it's just being really slow I found out today as well um, just look at that those hate spreads in the bottom of the board it should be here can you change some graphics in that debugger and then save out a PRG yeah so there is an option in uh, here um, I think it's in here what's it is settings memory uh, uh, that one there is a way of doing this I did read very briefly I will find out for next time how to do it and maybe we'll we'll have a go at that at some point but I'm, I'm pretty sure there is a way to save out a, a, a reloadable um, PRG file as well it might actually be in the in the manual somewhere. Oh, I'll have a look at that later on. Hi Retro. <laughs> nice to see you. How you doing? Yeah, you I mean you can you can use this to, to so if you go into the uh go on the right. So you go into here you can change any of these kind of screens and, and do what you want. See so you see it's changing live on the screen up there. Um I can write There you go, I've written hello in the top corner there. And you can save that as a PRG. Now the chances are when I start the game and, and come back to here that will get wiped again. Um, I know it's Sean Retro. So uh, in, for everybody else's benefit, Retro Lemons, or, or Sean as he's just said, is my son. Uh, this is the first time he's been on my stream. He's been meaning to come along so Give him all your uh, welcomes. Um, where was I? Yeah. So, so yeah. I mean, I'll I'll find out what the the command is. There is something somewhere. I know there is to, to save it out. It will be in here somewhere. Uh, pretty sure it's going to be one of these, like one of these dump dump memory things. Um, yeah, I don't know where that is though at the moment. But yeah, you could go in and change that. You could find out where the high scores are. You could save it with the cheats in. Um, <laughs> I know this is going to come out wrong, but nice balls. Yes, <laughs> they are very good balls, aren't they? You can you can thank they're Robin Levy's balls. <laughs> um, okay, so what were we doing? What were we doing? What were we doing? Oh yeah, we were trying to do an infinite lives cheat. So. Let's go back into the game again, bring up the memory map. So we were looking at this area around here. We're pretty sure, I can see the three there, but I don't know where that is represented. So we'll just keep an eye on this memory map from 4640. Um, 
to see when it when we die which ones change they should change color it looks like these here which is kind of where we were looking before you'll see they flash a certain color which means they're being red written to yeah see that was something else and it went to 4-4 four, four. okay so keep an eye on that 466B six, six, start the game again hi retro gamer nation it's it's a really really good way to um, understand existing games and see how they do their tricks so that's what this stream's about um, so yeah Sean for your benefit that what we're what we're doing is every Thursday we take a game from the Commodore 64 um, and we load it up into this tool and we see how it works we try and work out how to write cheats for it um, we, we learn the tricks that the programmers use back when they made the game um, to, to 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 create the effects that we see and to do the things that the Commodore 64 was, wasn't thought to be able to do um, and then on Saturdays we we make a game using the things we've learned and that yeah this is the debugger so in the top right corner this is the game when I start the game you can, you can play the game like normal but all these other windows show me what's going on at various points in the game So let's let's lose a life and see if that votes. So we're looking at the, the green box down here. And we're hoping that this is going to change when we hit something. It didn't that time. It did that time though. Okay, right. So we put a breakpoint in for that. 466B. So now any time that piece of memory changes, we should get... Uh, the, the program should stop. We go in here again, lose a life. Did it stop then? Nope. So let's go. That one wasn't it? Yep. Ah, see, it stopped now. So that means somewhere in here, if we press space, it's this line here. Uh, that doesn't seem right. That's. Put another breakpoint in somewhere. No, okay. Oh, again, so we crash. <laughs> yeah, so uh, when I told my son that I'd, I'd started Twitch, um, he was like, oh, cool, that's kind of cool. And then when I told him how many viewers I had, I think he was a bit kind of shocked. Um, it's it's because I don't just stream Fortnite or Apex Legends. I I stream something unique. Uh, that's the trick. You got to find something unique. And most of the people on here as well are um, are streamers as well. There's a couple of streamers on here as well. Listen to the secret. <laughs> so what do you stream at the moment then, Sean? What have you been streaming? It's going to be some kind of online multiplayer game, isn't it? It's going to be something like that. Oh, thanks for the follow, guys. I missed all of those. Uh, thank you, Dark AE Popped. Thank you, Turfin. Thank you, Peppy. Thank you, Noop. Um, I think that's it. I can't really. I'm I'm still very very noob with this. It's kind of quite funny, really. Um. And thank you, Comatron. The minute I start streaming Battle Royale games, I'll unfollow. I do like to play a little bit of um, Firestorm on Battlefield 5, but I'll, I will never, I will never push. Um, I will never stream that. So I was reading Hayes' thing, partner push. Wow, well, yeah, yeah, that would be crazy, wouldn't it? <coughs> um, Folks, it's funny how folks like Shall I Become a Streamer streamer. Yeah. Yeah, it is funny. Never thought of that. <laughs> let's make a C60 foot. No, let's not act with him. I never want to make it. C Battle Royale should stay of the C64. Um, can you imagine the, the, the nightmare of trying to control 
multiple people on the, on one small Commodore screen. I don't know how you would do it. Um, okay, so we've we found somewhere where the code seems to be being changed. Um, although this doesn't look quite right because this doesn't look like this address at all. Um, so we're we're looking for these addresses to be changed. So I'm gonna keep starting the game until I find somewhere that looks like it's actually right into the correct place. Yeah, so you're not seeing it, it's... Stopping on a branch instruction instead. Um, but something is right in here. And something is right in here as well. Let's put a breakpoint on that, 4665. Start trying to lose a life. And come into here, press space. And we're not so we've seen these weird branch instructions, but we're not getting anywhere from we've not seen anything that's changing this code. Which is weird because the breakpoint would imply that we we should be definitely memory. Yep. Was the commonly, if this word exists, use software to write situations on the C64? Like it's Pro Tracker. Uh, there's a couple. I use uh, Goat Tracker by uh, Covert Bit Ops. It's um, it's a uh, it's not the most amazing piece of software, but uh, it gets the gets the job done, and it does have a Mac version as well. Um, there's also uh, ones you can use on your Commodore itself, like Sid Wizard. Um, yeah, there's there's a few out there. I would suggest Goat Tracker um, if you if you're looking to do games because it does. Oh, what am I doing here? Or six six five because uh, it does support. Um, sound effects, which you will need to do to do games efficiently. Uh, I do do all the graphics and music myself in the games. Yeah, um, I'm trying to get some help with the music at the moment, but it's um, it's it's difficult. The the lad I've got who, who's kind of he's a close friend of mine at work. He's uh, he's started to, to do it now, so I've, I've not heard anything yet. But um, the, the stuff I heard that he did for the deluxe version of Dot Cosmos One, which will be on the RGCD cartridge, um, is pretty good. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do for Dot Cosmos Two because there's a lot of music that needs to go in there. Thanks for the follow, Copycat. Welcome to the stream. Um, what did and I saw Andy said something up here. Where was it? Isn't that branch of the address you're looking at? A five six five. No, see, I'm I'm looking for rights to four six six five, which is definitely being written to here. You can see it; it's gone purple, which would indicate that something's written to it. But for some reason, it's saying this is the breakpoint, and I don't see, I don't see anything here that would have written to that address. I don't know where it's getting that from. Uh, I mean, we can try looking for that address directly, I guess. Oops. Pause it again. Let's scroll back down again. Some good tutorials. Wish me a link. Is that tutorials for, for the trackers? Yeah, for the trackers. Um... Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't find one. Oh, thank you for the host, Cola. Appreciated. Um, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't find decent um, tutorials for for the goat tracker. I ended up um, just kind of looking at the, the. You get a few example songs with it. I just messed around with that. Read the readme to learn the shortcuts as much as I could. Um, right, let's see if we can find this address. So, 
in the top left panel we can hunt through memory we can't hunt every single address because we're gonna search for a couple of things so uh, fffd is what we kind of had the most success with last time and we're looking for 46665 4665 ah there we go 99ac so let's go and have a look at that 99a one before so we get the instruction ah this looks interesting so yes this is definitely it so you see here it's storing it's storing this value it's loading this value and then it's storing at 4665 it's using indexed addressing so it's using the x uh, to index the addresses and then it's incrementing the x by three and incrementing that by one i'm guessing this is the character data and this is the sprite data and the reason it's incrementing it by three let me bring up um it's probably the best way to show I'll show you in sprite pad actually but this is a, a, a typical sprite uh, let's turn multicolor mode off a sprite is made up of 63 bytes and that's stored as 8 bytes uh, sorry uh, 8 bits in each byte obviously because it's an 8-bit machine and they're stored like this from, from the same way we, we store screen data from uh, top to bottom left to right um, so this is the first byte, byte 0, byte 1, byte 2, byte 3. So in order to draw a character like that in, in these middle bytes, which I think is what it's doing, it might not be the middle, it might be on either side, you have to increment this by 3. So you go 1, 2, 3, and then you can draw here, then 1, 2, 3. And so what we're seeing here is 3 increments here, so it's adding 3. I was, there was, um, what's her name that did Neutron? Uh, Sarah Jane Avery was talking about um, the tools that she uses. And as she did kind of hint at the possibility of her um, releasing some of her tools. And her music tracker looks really good. It looks like a really good, nice piece of PC software that is, you know, using kind of fairly modern UI stuff. I, Goat Track is very... It's almost like a DOS program. It doesn't feel like a Windows program. It feels like a, an old DOS program. Um, and whereas I think uh, Sarah Jane's is is a bit more uh, modern in that, in that respect. Okay, so so this looks like it's grabbing our data. I'm guessing this is character data. So if we look at eight eight hundred, we're probably going to see. Um, Yes, so there you go. You see the character data 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is where it's getting the data to draw these and putting them in the sprites. So how does it know which one to get? So it must be setting in this Y value. So one of these values here is probably set 99A9 somewhere. There it is, 99A9. So this is using self-modifying code. So what this is doing, it's grabbing in a value from this location and it's storing it in 99A9 and 99A9 is the low byte of this, this instruction. So it changes it from 8800 to 88 something, which means it's basically picking one of these. So you know 8800 to draw a 0, 8808 to draw a 1 and so on. Um, and then so it's getting that value from here, 994C, so let's go and have a look at that. 994C, um, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, there you, all right, you can see, so this is a table. So 994C is here, and so for character 0, uh, the high byte, uh, the low byte becomes 8800, for 1 it becomes 8808. 8810 so it's just copying this value so this is a lookup table basically we covered i think we covered lookup tables in the last yeah we did we, we briefly touched on lookup tables um so it's just a way of converting a, a straightforward number like zero one two three four five into um a, another number here that's pre-calculated in a different way oh hi thalamus digital you made it excellent good to see you how are you doing We've uh, we've looked at all the uh, sprite multiplexer stuff. We've looked at the uh, characters, uh, the background characters, and the the, the um, parallax layers for these the stars in the background. 
we've looked at how the uh, enemy, uh, the player bullets are, are drawn, um, and we talked a little bit about how the border was opened at the bottom, how the how the Vic is tricked into thinking that the border has been drawn and therefore it leaves it open. Uh, and now we're we're using the fact that this is a sprite to find where this this lives counter is drawn and updated. Um, and so far we've tracked it down to this function here which seems to be a generic um, sprite draw function which is drawing drawing values which are stored in a kind of off oops I've just once again drawn random data into the character set it's not good I've done it again Ugh. we've found the numbers here um, actually numbers and some letters as well it looks like at some point they might have used hexadecimal debug values or something um, so this is quite a common thing that you'll see as well I've been swearing I have not been swearing at the cone I've been quite generous with the cone I think it's very good how dare you um, so for those guys who don't know this game was published by Thalamus um, it's a game by Cyberdyne, Cyberdyne Systems um, which was Dan Phillips and Robin Levy uh, is it Martin Walker? I think it's Martin Walker isn't it? Um, <laughs> I've already said this is one of the finest shoot ups on the system it is not a suck game at all <coughs> um, okay so we know that this value is probably what it's so this, this is the value that sets this pointer so why is the number it's trying to draw um, so there's probably a jump to this 998 oh there it is uh, so I'm kind of working back because I'm trying to talk about um... oh that's right John Kemp as well I forgot about John yeah yeah and Martin did a lot of Thalamus because he did the music on uh, Hunter's Moon as well as I pointed out, I'm quite quite proud of my my signed copy with his signature there. Very very pleased with that. Pride of place in my collection. Hi Jan, welcome to the stream and thank you for the follow. Um, so yeah, we're, we're just trying to trace back through this sprite draw function to figure out where the lives are stored. Oh, that's right, he wrote it, didn't he? Yeah, so I, I think it was Steps was asking about uh, musicians that um, that were also good coders. And yeah, M Martin, Martin Walker was one of those. He was uh, both a good coder and a good musician as well, yeah. And yeah, Matt Gray. So Matt Gray did the music for... Um, didn't he do he did some of the last ninja music I believe okay so let's let's track this back so so this is the branch so we're looking for accumulator set which is here it's storing it there 9984 there's a jump here, so there must be something branching to 9984 here. Let's see if it's close by. It is close by. There we go. This looks suspicious. So let's go and have a look at B005. Um, B005. 31. No, that was... Ah, oh, zero, zero. Oh, we've got no lives. Yeah, we've got no lives. I bet this is it, you know. Let's start again. Let's see if this goes up to three when we start the game. It has. So I think this is our lives counter. So let me try setting that to... Let's turn the breakpoint off. And let's try setting that to something a bit higher. I think it's crashed on me. Quickly write that address down. <laughs> I'm like it's when Martin decided to become a freelance musician and code his music, so he also coded Citadel. Yes, Citadel. We do remember that. Oops. 
the armor light we found the lives counter so i'm going to write that down now so what we'll do is we'll test that out in fact we'll take a short break for five minutes while i go and uh, have a quick bio break at the loo and a quick smoke um and then we'll we'll test out the the b005 value it looks like i'm gonna to have to reload the debugger anyway it's crashed um oh no it hasn't there we go um we'll test out that value to make sure it does affect the lives and then we'll find out where that is written to and change the code and then we can progress through the game a little bit um so yeah right let's take five guys i should be back very very shortly i'll, I'll leave some music on for you and i'll leave you my nice be right back screen so be right back guys let's turn that music down okay and we're back night sean probably uh a little bit above your head i will get you into c64 one day but you're of the generation that doesn't really know about it so <laughs> i've tried i have tried he's just uh he's too much into his battle royale games so he's uh probably never gonna really appreciate the, the good old commodore unfortunately <laughs> that's true it's true um, I'm streaming with Streamlabs, Streamlabs OBS. You know it and you like it. Okay, well next time you come round, Sean, we will have a Commodore day, and I will, uh, I will, uh, I will introduce you to the best games. Yeah, I think you've played a couple. Um, yeah, I'll introduce you some more. Uh, tools. Oh, I do need to set that up actually. I will set that up at some point. I'll uh, put all the uh, software that I'm using, the Stream Streamlab stuff, um, <coughs> and the uh, the debugger and, and things like my assembler when we do the um, the game stream as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sean was born in uh, nineteen. 98 as well so yeah we should you should join in uh, our discord we'll convert them all that's the aim right we're trying to get we're trying to get the commodore army bigger than ever uh okay so what were we doing we'd got uh, that's it we'd found the location or we think we found the location of the met of the uh of the lies this b005 here so i'm gonna try and edit that Although for some reason i can't edit that value Oh yeah, there we go. So I set to nine. See what happens when. Yep, yeah, it has its giving nine. Well, I think that's nine. It's quite difficult to tell. One interesting thing actually with this game, and just pause it a second, is unlike a lot of games, they use multicolor for the fonts as well. You'll see it on the title screen that the fonts are multicolor, and that's quite unusual. It's quite hard to do properly as well because your characters are only four rectangular pixels wide, so... <laughs> you, do like your, you do like your pixel games, don't you? I know we played a couple of Steam games that were kind of indie, indie kind of pixel art games. They were pretty good. Yeah, I'll, I'll, there's some real classics in here, and there's a lot of games, a lot of modern games that have been born out of these these games that are just kind of expansions on this so um okay so we know this is the we know this is the lives counter now so let's let's just double check i should go down to eight yes so we know that's the lives counter so what we're going to do is we're going to search for where that's been used in memory so if we search the whole of memory again we can't search all the way up there seems to be a limit on how far we can search based on how many bytes we're actually searching for and we have to search in little engine format, so we put the least significant byte first. So we're looking for B005. Okay, so there's seven locations where this is being affected. So let's go through them one at a time. Um, we take one off each of the addresses to find find the actual uh, op code that's acting on it otherwise we would get it so if I just jump straight to that so let's do that now oops if I jump straight to 9977 you'll see it doesn't make any sense 
and that's because actually this is the instruction this is the address so the address will always be the uh, uh, the operand so there'll always be one byte before it so we just we go to sorry do it in here we go to one byte before it so 9976 so this this just looks like it's drawing it again it's just loading it we're looking for something that was is either storing it uh, decreasing it um, yeah storing or decreasing it should be enough or, or even adding a, no it wouldn't add or subtract it would be store or decrease so let's see if we can find that by looking through the code yeah good night Sean recent discussions or not you can't tease us with things like that you cannot tease us with things like that you have to tell us what you mean oh and I've just jumped to a random piece of code instead of doing this which lucky for us is actually just loading the game it looks like um, in the meantime while that's doing that I'm actually gonna go and look at these addresses uh, so this is just loading the value there and oaring it with the value in B06, which we wouldn't be doing very much because B06 is. Oh, yeah, it's done something very weird indeed. I'm going to restart the game because I'm not sure what it's done. Has it put it in demo mode or something? What have I done there? I've created something very odd. I seem to have put it in some kind of. <laughs> oh yeah, good luck with your interview, Hayes, by the way. Oh, I seem to have loaded another level, but in demo mode. Oh, there's a really good example of the sprite. Let's have a look at that, actually. That's a really good example of the sprite multiplexer doing its job. But this looks like it's drawing way more than eight sprites on the screen. But you'll see when we go into the into the multiplexer mode, it is still only drawing eight at a time. Um, I don't know why it's locked my. I am going to load this again in a minute because it seems to have done some weird stuff to it. Uh, but you could see it was drawing way more than eight sprites at a time using the multiplexer. Right, let's let's load this up again. Search for that address. <laughs> Are you at liberty to tell us who agreed to that? <laughs> this loads up. Okay. I don't know that name offhand. I'm sure I've had dealings with his code or with other parts that he may have worked on in various games. Trying to remember all the names is kind of impossible. Multiplexer does what? Well, I can show you on this screen actually, Miss DK. So if you look in the top corner, so let's, let's go into uh, that mode. So you can see there. I think we counted 24 before, so it looks like there's 24 sprites there. Um, but obviously the, the Commodore can only display 8 at a time. So what happens is... Um, for some reason this raster line is locked. Let me find the, the manual a second just so I can unlock this raster line. Quite frustrating not being able to move it. Uh, yeah, so what happens is during... Uh, during a single frame this raster line moves down the screen and draws behind it um, what's what you see on the screen so at this point when the raster is at the top of the screen the the game will will draw um, eight sprites um, have I got that in maximum mode oh, for some reason my PDFs appear in uh, edge and it's quite annoying um, Thank you for the follow, Kernsey. Welcome to the stream. 
Um, yeah, so as Thalmas Digital says, um, the 24 sprites uh, are stored or sorted into Y order. And then at the top of the screen, it takes the top eight of those and draws them to the screen. And then as it passes the bottom of the sprites, they're considered to be drawn. And you'll see when I get to here, now these ones had been drawn, they can be redrawn further down the screen. And then as the raster gets past them, it will draw them and so on down the screen. And they're just drawn in order. And that has the result of, of it appearing to have all of the sprites on the screen at the same time. So it's it's just a it's a it's a clever trick to um, utilize the fact that we know where the Vic is drawing on the screen to to make sure that as soon as something is drawn, we can then move it and draw it somewhere else again. Oh, there we go. It's stopped locking there. I don't know what I did to lock it. Oh, it's double click. Okay. There you go. If you if you get a locked raster on this screen like that and it's not moving, if you double click, it then sticks to your cursor again. So yeah, you can see there that it's drawing these top eight sprites. They're being sorted continuously. And then as we move down the screen, the ones that have been drawn get moved to new locations ahead of the raster bar, ahead of the raster uh, line, and get redrawn again with a different position and different frame. Uh, we determined on this screen. Thanks for the follow, Thalmus. Appreciate it. Um, we can uh, we, we notice on this screen as well that it's not actually doing any color updates if we change the colors um, they stay changed for the individual sprites so you get some kind of weird flickering as as a sprite that's yellow gets drawn up here and then gets redrawn down here so you see a yellow sprite here then suddenly it appears here um, but yeah it's a it's a common trick um, certainly from kind of the the mid 80s onwards it was used in most games um, I, I can't think of an example of a game from like 1990 onwards that had a, a fair amount going on the screen that didn't use it. Um, it's done in different ways by different people, uh, depending on the needs. There's there's general multiplexes which this seems to be, um, which which can draw any number of, well, uh, up to a limit, a, a number of sprites at random positions on the screen, and updates very quickly on the fly to resort them. Then there's other games which may create zones where um, it will draw the first eight sprites in say the top half of the screen and then whenever the rest of the line gets to the middle of the screen it redraws another eight in the bottom half. That's called zone multiplexing. Um, it's quite common uh, to see that used in uh, boss fights when you've got really large enemies consisting of multiple sprites. Um, it's used quite often for that because it's a very easy way, it's a very quick way um, to, to redraw sprites. And yes, yeah, uh, zero page is used a lot. The, the key to a good multiplexer is to to reduce the number of cycles it takes to draw each line, uh, to draw each each sprite. Because for every sprite, you need to fetch a new position, uh, sometimes a new color. You definitely need a new sprite pointer. And if you're doing that to eight sprites, that's quite a lot of cycles. In fact, it's more cycles than you can fit on one line. So you tend to have a kind of a buffer zone between the bottom of one sprite and the top of another one before it can be reused. And a good multiplex will reduce that buffer zone as much as possible. But also known as kind of tightening the uh, the sprite formations. Um, and and to do that, zero page is is very very heavily used, and index indirect index addressing is definitely used a lot. Um, that's something we talked about a little bit. Um, we didn't go into any detail on it, but I mentioned I think Andy um, in the last stream, Andy Magic Knight. Um, mentioned it when we were looking at doing map graphics but we went down the self modifying code route uh, just because it's easier to explain at first um, but when we move on to um, the next stream um, if we have time we will look at collision and when we do collision we'll be using indexed uh, indirect indexed addressing as it's a very easy way to kind of do lookups on the screen um, without having to use self modifying code everywhere and with collision you need to use it everywhere so it's a lot more efficient. It's it's quite similar in in the the end result, um, but it, it means you don't have to directly update it everywhere in the code. You're not you're not writing self modifying code. You're just uh, modifying a lookup. Uh, but we'll go over that in the next stream at some point. Okay, so we know that B zero zero five is edited in these addresses. Uh, we ruled out this one. I think I ruled out the second one as well. Let's just double check that. A E three eight. We take one off it. 
yeah, that's just a load address. So let's have a look at the other ones. I can scroll down to that. EA, so that's this one here. Also just load in. Uh, it's doing a comparison with 15 and then a branch and then increase in here. So there is some kind of life increment here. This could be... I'm not sure what that would be actually. Oh my god, name check. Yeah. <laughs> Andy, you were very helpful in the last stream. I mean, I think it, if it hadn't been for you pointing out um, something that we were doing in the loop towards the end, I don't think we would have solved that bug in, in time. Um, certainly not before I got through my second bottle of wine. So, uh, AD1. Yeah, so this is the increment. So we, we kind of want the opposite of this. We kind of want a decrement, uh, which would prove that it's been decreased somewhere. B5AF, so let's go and have a look there. So that's the store. Ah, okay, so it looks like this address here, it's B5AD, is what is setting the, the number of lives we start with. So let's, that's that one there. So if we set that to nine, I'm going to write that one down as well. Lives, initial lives. And that's B5 AD. I think when we start the game now, we should start with nine lives. The wine helped me, the wine you were drinking. It helps my nerves. I've, I've not drank, I've not drank any t uh, tonight and I do feel a little bit more nervous than normal. Um, I think the collision is character based. Yeah, so this is the thing we're going to look at. Once I got the lives, we're going to have a look. So I think the collision is character based. The game checks the character block behind your ship. Nobody uses the character's built in sprites to sprite collision detection. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of pointless. I do use it in Dock 1, but just because it was easier to use than, than writing a piece of code that would then take up some room for which I could use for the maps. So and there, there wasn't enough going on the, on the screen for me not to use it. Sprite to background collision, though, I had to write my own. There's, it's sprite to background collision is even more uh, useless than sprite to sprite. Sprite to sprite collision gets very hard um, when you're when you're using sprite multiplexing as well. It's not not that easy to do. The problem with sprite to sprite collision is it only tells you which sprites are colliding, um, not all, all in one go. So if you've got eight sprites on the screen and four of them are touching each other on one side and the other four are touching on the other side, the sprite collision register will tell you that all the sprites are colliding, but it doesn't tell you in what groups they're colliding. So it's good to kind of know when something has collided, and then you can drill down and find out, you can do your own checks to find out more. Um, yeah, exactly, as, as Talimus says, you've got to do you've got to do way too much to, to use them, so it tends not to get used very much. I'm certainly not using it in Dock 2. Uh, it's just not it's not suitable. Um, so I believe that change here, so loading the accumulator with nine here, this looks like the initialization of the level. So when we started, we got nine lives, which we do. Okay, so we know how to give ourselves more lives to begin with. Let's see if we can find out how to prevent them going down as well. Um, so we're gonna jump to E9, F3. Ah, there we go. This is gonna be it. So this is decreasing the value in here. Um, and if it's minus, so this EA04, um, this is being jumped to if the value... <laughs> yes, you were right, definitely. Yeah, sprite to sprite collision is terrible. Um, yeah, so this, this EA04 is being branched to if the value in the lives counter becomes negative and as we saw in the in the first stream uh, first game stream negative numbers um a, a number can be deemed negative if it's from 128 all the way up to 255 so if bit seven of the the value is set and so if your lives go from zero minus one it goes round to 255 and i mean it's obvious anyway zero minus one is minus one so it does become minus so I'm guessing this is a game over routine. So in fact, I can try that out. If I just jump to that address. Oh, in fact, I'm already at game over. Let me start again. And then I'm just gonna jump to that address. I think we should see a game over. Yeah, so that's the game over routine. 
So I'm going to make a note of that. So you can see how just by just by kind of looking at how the sprites are made up for the, the score, we've now kind of worked out where the lives are, how to set the initial number of lives, how to force a game over. And this, this line here, this decrease B005, is, um, is what's decreasing the lives. So all we need to do is change this to do something else. So if I bring up the opcode list, my opcode list, So here's a list of opcodes. So we just want something which does nothing. And there's a perfect there's a perfect thing for this, which is called bit. I will explain what bit does in a bit more detail um, when we move into collision. It's a very good thing for, for testing collision. It's basically like an and operation, but it doesn't destroy what's in the accumulator. Um, it just sets the flags. Um, but I'll go into more detail about that. So it's good here because it doesn't actually change what's in the accumulator and it just sets the flags and because we're not changing it the minus flag will never get set so this ce now needs to become 2c let's find ce e9f3 e9f3 there we go oh, i forgot already forgot what i said it should be uh, 2c okay 2c okay cool so now let me write that down as well. So E9 F3 F3 comes to C. I think now if I lose life, unless there's multiple places, there is one more address that we haven't checked yet. Um, unless there's another place that's that's changing that in fact we can see it's here. Uh, no, it's just setting the lives to zero here. So this is it. This is the only place that was decreasing that life value. Uh, steps. I, I cheated earlier and had a look on the net. After loading the game, hit the left button on your action replay. And then enter poke 59891 to gain access to an unlimited supply of lives. Well, let's have a look. If we load up the calculator, let's see if we've... Well, let's see if our cheat works first, and then we'll see if that value's the same. Uh, we're not moving for some reason. Why is that? I changed another value somewhere that I shouldn't have changed. Nine F three. Oh, that's interesting. I don't think that worked. So let's let's load the game up again. While the game's loading up, I'm gonna have a look at this this value. Five nine eight nine one. Okay. So just leave that loading. Is that loading? Yeah, it's loading. Let's bring up the calculator. So um, pretty much every calculator on in the OS is now uh, Mac do this. Um, so this is the Windows one, the Mac and Linux one do the same, I'm pretty sure. Um, you just select a mode, so we want decimal mode, we're going to type in the address that 891, and in hex it's 8E9F3, and sure enough that's the address we were looking at. Uh, they're putting 173 in, um, which, let's have a look what opcode that is, so that's AD, that looks like a load accumulator, I think. Which probably makes more sense actually, because then they're not changing any other flags. Um, let's have a look. Where's the opcodes list gone again? AD is yeah, it's a load accumulator. So I opted for bit. They've gone for load accumulator. So I'm going to try the ch the cheat I did again just to see if it was a mistake I made. Um, I'm going to change this CE to two C. And then I'm going to start the game. Okay, yeah, so that doesn't work. It doesn't work. So let's, let's load it again. And do it with the AD instead. Hi, Supertech TV. Good to see you. Game certainly contains a lot of code. Yeah. The thing is, is 
the Commodore's only ever going to have 64k of code at one go, so you've only got 64k to look through, and of that, 16k of it is almost definitely going to be full of graphics. That reduces it down to 48k. Then you've got other data as well, so you're going to have level data. When you get down to the actual code, you, you're probably looking at 16 to 30k of 32k of code, probably not much more than that. Um, so you, you've halved the amount of code you have to look at. And tools like this make it really easy. Like one thing I realized today, I, d I hadn't even noticed it before. You see this column of blue numbers? This is how many cycles it takes to run each command. So that's really, really useful. If you're trying to debug why a piece of code is affecting a raster line more, um, you can have a look here to see, oh, this, this loop is doing from here to here. So it's taking 25 cycles to do, to do that loop per, per line. I also found out that this tool will work with NES code as well. Um, I've not tried it yet, but I was reading through the release notes and they did have some mention of uh, NES emulation code as well. Let me check from your deep experiences. My deep experience is pretty much what you've seen on stream so far. I haven't used the disassembler that much. I didn't use it for Doc. I only started using it during Doc 2. Um, and I haven't really done that much with it. Um, this is what this stream is about. This stream is about me learning and sharing it with you guys. And you guys sharing anything you've learned with me as well. So... You wish you had a tool like this for DOS? There must be something like this for DOS out there. I'd be surprised if there wasn't. Um, okay, so let's change that value to a load accumulator instead. So same same address, but we're just changing the, the command. So now it's load accumulator. And it does that way. Now you see it seems to crash at that point for some reason. Have I got a breakpoint? Uh, I do have a breakpoint, but it's turned off. Let's delete it as well, just to make sure. For some reason, it doesn't like that being changed. But something else is, is written in that address. Um, let's try... Let's try something else. Let's restart the game. This time we're going to load the game. Um, I also made .cosmos off stream. Yes, I did make .cosmos off stream. And .cosmos 2 as well. I'd love to do Dot .cosmos2 on stream, but I don't think I'd ever finish it. <laughs> There's so much to do on there already. Um, I am I mean, I'm getting there slowly, um, but there's so much to do. If I had to explain every single thing, it would, it would take forever. How much wine went into building Dot .cosmos? Oh, quite a lot. I actually spent um, a lot of my downtime on holiday in South Africa. Um, writing so yeah this is um, actually I, I, can I have a look where I can get the original one because this is this is a cracked version so it could be something to do with that because um, I'm definitely having issues with, with this uh, let's just pause again let's try changing it again uh, AD. No, I didn't make videos of developing Dot Cosmos. Um, I oh well, there's there's some kind of small videos just demonstrating some progress on Doc Two, but but nothing you can learn from really. Um, yeah, so this version was just the first version I found on um, CSDB because I don't actually have this uh, this game. Um, at the moment. I did have it. I used to have it. Can I knock it out? It seems to be changing. That's the problem. So if you if you look when I when I start the code, it seems to it seems to know I'm putting that cheat in there somewhere or something. So if I if I restart again, I'm gonna get sick of restarting this. You can see already this code is here. So we've got E9F3, we've got CE05B0. But uh, wait a minute, doesn't match what's here. May I wait till it's loaded? Maybe it's because it's loaded. Okay, 
Okay, so you can see there we've got. Actually, this isn't matching there. Ah, oh, there we go. CE05B0. But if I just change the opcode there to AD, so it's now loading, it should, shouldn't make any difference um, to the way the code runs. When I restart, it all changes. Everything here is changed. It almost looks like this is, in fact it is, this is kernel code, it's kind of, it's banked in the kernel. 37, oh, that's weird. Thirty five. oh no it's crashed. I wonder if it's doing something sneaky. Sneaky with this. Hmm. I'm trying to think how that could be doing it. Just write 4C, 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 in 4C, 4C. Are you being serious there? Or is, I mean, this, this, could this just be another Acmefin? <laughs> I mean, I mean, what are you telling me to do here, Acmefin? I can do that if you want me to. I don't think that's going to do very much. Ah, thank you for the follow, Georgie Bitball. Welcome to the stream. Turn my fan a little bit and get very warm. I hope you can't hear that on the on the microphone. Let me know if it, it's starting to make some noise. I think Acmefin's trolling me, isn't it? I don't think there's anything going to happen when I do that. Um, but yeah, I think I think something is switching it to kernel, so it's not actually changing the right addresses when I do that. Uh, uh, so it would probably need doing somewhere else. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, what I wanted to do was start looking at the um, the sprite collision, so I'm just going to set my lives to as high as I can get them. Uh, so the check was for minus. So if I set my lives to um, I think it's because I'm doing it with running code steps. I think because I'm um, I'm in the middle of some code while it's running. What I could probably do actually, if we go, where was that line? A04. So if I go to the, the game over routine, so I know when this game over routine gets hit, kernel has to be banked out at this point. Um, is it EA04? Yeah. Kernel has to be banked out at this point or else this code can't run. So I'm going to wait till it gets to that point. You see how 01 is at 35. So that's the current memory assignment for kernel. Uh, I can't remember what that is offhand. Um, so let me just die and get to the game over screen and we should break. Oops. I'll look at another screen while I'm doing it. Okay, so it's broke, so we've got to here. So now I'm going to change that value because I know for a fact that the kernel is banked out at this point. Um, so I would hope that this works now. No, that wasn't right, was it? E9F3. There we go. And and I'm, I'm still convinced mine will work to 2C. Um, so that's changed there. That's now active. And continue. Okay, this seems to be okay. The game's still running. Oh, but it freezes when we get to there. It's doing something very odd. I'm not sure why. It could be the version. So let, let's try another version. Um, I actually don't know what the cleanest version would be. Let's have a look on CSDB. I guess, I guess the latest championship version edition might be good. Um, let's have a look. The problem with a lot of these is they're going to have other stuff in them as well. See, I just grabbed this top one up here. Um, 
maybe if I get the latest competition, uh, like this one. You see, this has got nine things installed on it. But I mean, we don't have to activate any of them, so let's let's try that one. Let's have a look. I wish they would take the time to upload clean versions of these as well. Although actually, I think champion. If I'm um, correct me if I'm wrong, Thalamus, isn't Championship Edition uh, a recent release? Oh, you emailed me a clean version. Awesome. Let me have a look. Oh, wow, I have how so many mails here? Uh, okay. <clears throat> um, not seeing it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it in my emails. Searching under your name. Is it definitely gone? Google's not filtered it or something, have they? Uh, we'll take a break in another five or ten minutes. I, I want to get this clean version uploaded, installed. You sent that to my Google Mail account, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's going up. Get my spam folder, it shouldn't have gone to the spam folder there. No, it hasn't. Okay, I'll tell you what, we'll take a short break now while I try and find a version. I'm going to have a quick cigarette. Uh, fresh on my drink and we'll take five and we'll be back in five minutes to continue. I'll leave you with some nice music and see you in five. Uh, okay, and we're back. I don't know why my Be Right Back morphs into starting soon after a while. I'll have to figure out what's going on there. <coughs> Um, it should just be a looping video, it's a bit weird. So Thalamus Digital has kindly loaned me um, clean versions of the competition deluxe uh, copy, so let's give them a load in and have a look what's going on. I'm hoping this works in the, in the debugger, but let's get a fresh debugger open. Close all these down. One thing I have noticed with the debugger is it can be a bit fussy with, with some uh, disk files, so... Um, okay, it seems to be doing some... Crunching? Is that crunching? Like it might be. Mm, it seems to be stuck in a kernel loop. Let's open it up in the IMR Master. So this is a great tool for, um, for extracting PRGs from, from disks. And hopefully, there we go. So yeah, if you, if you try D64 and it doesn't work in the um, debugger, you can use DIR Master to grab a PRG out of it and use that. Um, cool. Okay. Interesting. So, I don't know if we can find out what the story is here. Be success. Yes, success. <coughs> um, but there's two zeros in these corners. I wonder what that's about. Is there a secret to those? Well, let's let's try putting our, our code in. So let's, let's go and have a look in that location again. What was it? E nine F three. 
so here we are we've got the same same piece of code so that's definitely in the same location oh actually out of interest you can see here uh, 080 to uh, 0 C7 this looks like the sprites that we're seeing here this is almost definitely the sprite multiplexer locations um, I'm guessing these ones in the middle are probably the X and Y coordinates um, yeah I'm guessing that's what's going on here because they're, they're changing very quickly so Uh, the best version would probably be the competition edition, I would say. As I believe it's uh, Cytronic. An auditor on their site. Um, sure, I'm sure Thalamus Digital can give you more information. Increases enemy bullet speed. Why would you want to do that? It's just giving yourself pain. And keys one to eat the lower level and press F7 to watch a demo at the level. Okay, let's well let's go for level eight. Now uh, is this gonna load properly? It is loading properly. Probably because the disc is inserted. If you corrupt A it will crash. Oh yeah, good point. So yeah, let's try knocking that that value out then. Um Okay, that didn't work. That's probably because we're loading the PRG in directly. So let, let's try changing these values and see what happens. So uh, E9, F3. So NOP is EA, um, and this just does nothing. Kind of like the real EA. Doesn't really produce good games. They just do nothing, just force people to release unfinished games. Honestly, I'm not bitter. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think Andy's right. I mean, the accumulator is being set here. I, I mean, it is being stored. The branch if minus would be acting on the result of this. Um, it's set to zero and stored here, so this wouldn't be happening, so that's fine. Um, the other option we could do here, of course, is we could remove this branch completely so that it doesn't jump to the... Um, uh, doesn't jump to the game over routine or we could just make it jump to the next line so but let's see what happens now and we get a freeze again that's really interesting we can see the code again has changed why 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 is that happening my guess is it's something to do with kernel mode because we've got this value here 37 um, and if I, well, you can see there when I changed it, it, yeah, CPU jam, yeah, I've completely jammed it up now. Actually, so if we, if we search the memory again for that value, so 05B0, so these are the addresses where it's edited, so these ones are in kernel, these ones are over basic ROM. I'm going to guess basic ROM is never going to be rebanked in. Kernel could be rebanked in, they could be using kernel for doing interrupts. Um, run stop in the screen select, in the type screen select, normal random bullets. Oh, that's what these are here then. Let's see. F5 must be that other side. Ah, okay. And so this is why it's competition edition. So you can, yeah, so you can... I'm going to complete the game on, on bullet speed 7 with uh, random bullets. I'm intrigued now. I want to see what that's like. White and Joycecon. Oh, I'm in two player mode as well. This doesn't feel too bad at the moment, but I'm guessing it gets more difficult when enemies start shooting. Oh crap, 
was that one? It's been so long since I played this, I can't remember um, what any of these pickups do anymore. Some of them are obvious um, from the shapes, some less so. Ah! Um, okay, so I'm gonna see if there's another place where I can I can make this change. So if I look in here, so this was what was drawing the values to the screen. Um, that's probably no good because we still want the values to draw, and I don't want to mess too much in that location because um, it looks like it's using index addressing, so it's probably drawing these scores as well. I don't want to mess with that area. Oh, and I've just done another random jump into code somewhere. Oh, I've got to stop doing that. Um, I kind of want to touch on um, the... Uh, <laughs> I've just received another email. <laughs> so it was just slow. Obviously the, the link between here and Canada is quite slow. <laughs> Uh, for, for Gmail, <laughs> uh, I have got all your all your emails now, or two of them actually. Two, two out of three ain't bad. Um, yeah, I, I want to look at the sprite collision. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the maximum number of lives that I can get without as uh, without as causing the game over. So if we go to B5 AD. Uh, right. E5 AD should be the maximum number of lives, but it doesn't look like it is. Because probably that's different now. Because this is competition edition, so it's probably been compiled a little bit differently. So let's have a look at B5 DE. That seems to be the closest. Meatloaf, yeah. I said two out of three, so I just I, I couldn't help it. I think we're, most of us are at that age when you hear two out of three, that's what you think of. Um, B5, 5D, D. Uh, load X, 15, stall that there, 15. Definitely didn't start with 15 lives. Check another address. A E E one. That's the increment one. A E D A. That's a comparison. A E one nine. I do wonder what that that is actually doing. Uh, Nine F three F three. And now that's the decrement one. A yeah, zero nine. And that's resetting it to zero. Oh that's interesting. Now we can't find Is it crashy yeah it crashed with the game playing as well. That's the although I haven't tried on the competition edition, so let, let's try that. Uh, so uh, E nine F. Oops, I'll do it in here. Uh, e nine F three C E zero five. Uh, let's just E A them out. You see, the moment I change it, it crashes. It didn't even register that I'd done anything, and it it crashed immediately. It's really bizarre. Oh, maybe because I didn't pause it while I was doing it. Let me try again with pausing it. Uh, I'm not going to spend too long trying to get this Infinite Lives hacking. Um, I actually think maybe the disassembly isn't the perfect tool for doing Infinite Live hacks like this. I think you probably are better off using an action replay, but I'm determined to persevere with it. This is a learning experience for everybody, so. 
Um, but I will uh, move on to looking at um, collision in a moment. So I paused it now. So let's go and change that. E A E A E A and resume. No, it just immediately crashes. It's interesting. It's really interesting behaviour. I'm not sure why it's doing that. <coughs> okay. Okay, no, not to worry. Let's um, let's start looking at the sprite collision. So, as we mentioned before, um, oh yeah, that's a good point. We could just enter the cheat of the title screen. That's a very good point. Let's do that. Well, it says I am gullible. I I'm not sure if if that's truly the cheat or if if. Uh, if Thalamus Digital is trolling us, but let's let's give it a try anyway. <laughs> He's probably chuckling to himself now. <laughs> I, th I think it was a bit of a troll. <laughs> it certainly doesn't seem to be doing anything anyway. <laughs> Very good. The thing is, I even read it. I am gullible. I had a feeling it wasn't. It wasn't true, but um, I still fell for it. Damn you! Damn you and your trickery. Um, okay, let's let's have a look at the collision. So, see if we can turn the collision off. Then it won't matter. So, there's going to be two types of collision going on here. We're going to have sprite to sprite collision because we need to pick things up like this. Um, which actually you should shoot first or else you don't actually get anything of this. Um, and then there's going to be a character to sprite collision that allows the bullets to hit the players, uh, bullets to hit the enemies, uh, the bullets to hit these power-ups that they change, and the bullets to hit the scenery so they, they don't go through the scenery and for the player to hit the scenery as well. Um, let's start by looking at the the sprite to scenery. Now, if we were to use um, the Vic registers, so the, what the, the way the Vic sprite collision, sprite to background collision works, is it will detect if any part of any sprite is hitting any pix any pixel of any sprite is hitting any pixel of a background character. Now we've already determined when we looked at the. <coughs> Let me find the, the correct screen. Oh my god, I've really got to learn this because I go through every single screen before I find it. We've already determined that the, the background is actually mostly um, filled in and what we're actually seeing is holes in the background um, which reveals so the background colour is white so wherever we see white that's actually just a hole in the characters that's showing the background colour. <coughs> um, which means if we were to use the um, the, the Vic registers to do sprite to background collision everything would be colliding everywhere and that would be no good um, so I, I'm pretty sure it's not going to, in fact I, I can guarantee it's not going to use that um, so instead what, what they're probably using I don't know why it's gone to that if I just reset it again I really have got to learn the shortcut keys for this instead what I suspect they're using is their uh, I say they, it's Dan. Uh, what Dan Phillips would have done is um, taken the position of the sprite and, and done some calculations with it. So the sprites can be positioned um, pixel, uh, pic single pixel accuracy anywhere on the screen. So the screen actually starts at zero over here somewhere. This is about position 24, I think, in the sprite register, and it's where zero starts here. Um, and then every every character is eight pixels wide. So every time the sprite moves eight pixels, it moves one character on the screen. And I think we briefly touched on uh, how to multiply numbers by two, by powers of two, by two, by four, by eight. And that's by using the, uh, the logical shift right operator. We did it for working out the tile lookups. Um, and a similar thing will be happening with the code um, to find 
expected to convert the sprite into character space. So if you've got a sprite, let's imagine the sprites do start at zero here, and we've got a sprite that's eight characters along. That means its sprite position would be 64. So in order to get from 64 to eight, we have to divide by eight. So if you take a sprite position and you divide it by eight, you get its position on the screen. What's actually happening is it takes the sprite position, it subtracts the, the gap here, this border, and then divides by eight and it will give you that, that location. The amount that they subtract here can depend on things like um, scroll speed, any kind of pre-prediction. Uh, so sometimes you will scroll two pixels a frame, so you might actually do your calculations based on two pixels ahead of where the sprite is, so you can kind of predict what's just ahead. Um, so we're not going to try and look for this value. Instead, what we'll do is we'll look for this, this division by eight. Um, and to divide by eight, you will do arithmetic shift left. Uh, let me just open Sublime and show you. Oh, not that one. I don't want to see Doc yet. Open a fresh. Oh no, no. Oh, let me open a fresh window. Uh... Oh my God, how do I open a fresh window? Let's do it on this one. There we go. Um, so. In fact, let's find where we did the code. Uh, we did it in the map code, didn't we? So in here we did this, we did the rolling of, of a character. This was a 16-bit roll, um, so we, 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 would, um, we would shift one, uh, roll the next one, shift one, roll the next one. This was times, uh, oh no, this was dividing by, no, this was times in by four. Hang on, is that right? Oh yeah, shifting left is uh, times in, shifting right is dividing. Um, so we're, we're going to look for this command. It's probably going to be uh, LSR, which is the, the right shift equivalent of this. Um, and it's going to be fairly easy to find because um, it's going to be done three times in a row. And that's going to be quite unique in the code. That's probably not going to happen very many places in the code. So let's go over the op code for that. So we're looking for LSR. And we just want the immediate version of it, um, which is this one, uh, which is 4a. So let's have a look through the code for 4a um, used three times in succession. No. Okay. So in that case, let's look for slightly different version of it. We can try the zero page version. And there's also the absolute, so we'll check for four six and four e. So let's do four six first. No. Four e, four e, four e. No. Okay. So another thing that they could be doing is just doing two. They might be storing values as um, half x. So one of the tricks uh, that's used quite often, especially in horizontal scrollers like this, where things are moving on the horizontal plane, um, horizontal axis, um, is things will move uh, two pixels as a minimum. Um, they will never move one pixels at a time. And the reason they do that is because the sprite uh, locations on screen go from zero here. Well, if we imagine just the screen space, they go from zero here uh, to 320 here, which means that you can't fit the X position of a sprite into a single byte. You actually need nine bits instead of eight. Um, when we do the player stuff on, on Saturday, we'll, we'll introduce the concept of the, the most significant, yeah, the MSB, as, as uh, Andy says. Um, so what some sprite multiplexers do is they will store the X values as half of this. So they go from zero to 160. Uh, it makes it easier to... Um, to deal with those values because you don't have to worry about the MSB that you can have the multiplexer handle that instead um, and then the sprites themselves are stored in uh, 0 to, to 160 so let's check so we've got some examples there uh, so let's check that code oops and go to 154D yeah this doesn't look like it's doing it because this is doing yeah. Oh, actually, uh, uh, won't they be in there? Let's be. Yes, so I see what you're saying. I'm not thinking about the extra bits, am I? That's the problem here. Um, 
okay yes yeah, so what andy's saying is so this is what we checked for originally so that's the equivalent of doing um let's make a new file me not thinking straight this is why i need wine you see uh, let's just make a test file I'll stick at my desktop for now Uh, so, so that that, that uh, division um, by four looks like uh, this. You see, it's just opcodes. So, in memory, that will indeed just be four A, four A, four A. However, what we want to look for, um, yeah. See, you're drinking cider and you're solving the problems. I'm not. I'm drinking like sugar-free Sprite and uh, I'm solving nothing. But I'm going to keep drinking it and pretending it's wine. So, um, so the other thing we looked for was a zero-page version of that, which might be acting on some addresses like this, um, and that would be done four times, like so. And so that isn't going to be what I'd originally searched for, which was that. It's going to be that instead. But the problem is we don't know what these addresses are. We can see when we looked in the zero page, we could see some addresses uh, being affected down here. So if we knew what the what the player position was, we could probably work it out. Um, let's actually start. Let's see, so it was around about here. There's only two sprites on the screen, and these seem to be the only two. If I move up. Okay. It's crashed on me. Why has it crashed on me? That's interesting. I haven't changed anything and it's crashed on me. Um, but this, this value seemed to move anyway. Um, and I think that could be the... Okay, let's try loading it up again. Ugh. <sighs> I'm determined to persevere with this with this debugger. I think it's really good for, for discovering how people do code. I don't think it's that great for hacking though. Maybe I'll start introducing two two programs at the same time to do this stuff. So again, let's move up the screen so we can see. Oh, it's crashed again. And I did absolutely nothing then. Check my breakpoints. Yeah, nothing in there. restart uh, it wouldn't be a let's maker or let's dissector stream if we didn't have problems that's for sure the Mac version seems a lot more stable yeah actually I was playing around with the Mac version today to try and learn the breakpoints um, on my lunch hour and I'd never had these problems with it but maybe it is. It'd be interesting to know um, what system it's been developed. I'm guessing it's probably been developed on Linux. Okay, let's turn the joystick on this time. Okay, it seems to be working there. So, okay, I can see the player X is this value here that I've got highlighted. Um, whoops. Uh, so if I move this way, and indeed it's using half values. You notice how this is is going from 1 to up to 9a over here which is approximately half of this this screen width so let's have a look for 7c combined with um, zero page so uh, let's do that a bit lower so let's look for 467C and see if we can find it. No, okay. So let's just search for two of the normal. So we know it's using half X values. So instead of looking for zero page version, we're looking for the, just the, the standalone single, single byte version. Uh, and we're looking for two of them because instead of divided by eight, we only need to divide by four now. And we've got these locations, so I suspect one of these will be doing the, the lookup. So this one's dividing by 
16. Um, it's also loading values from a... Yeah, I'd expect it to, to get them in a loop as well. I, I think what we'll, what we'll see is we will see uh, a block of LSR, two LSRs, um, and then a little bit further down, some more LSRs for the Y register. I'd expect it to, to work out the X and Y at roughly the same time. Um, so I don't think it's this location. It's using 4 there anyway, that's divided by 16, that could be something completely different. Um, I don't know what that is, we'll, we'll look at that at some point. It could be something like um, enemy placement maybe, judging by the way it's loading these values in. Um, this could be kind of enemy data being looked up. Um, I'm going to jump straight to the next section. Again, it's dividing by 16. I'm likely that that is to do with it. I mean, it could be, but we'll, we'll come back to that. I don't think it is. Uh, so let's have a look at the next one. E3 DA. Uh, this looks more promising. Um, this is only divided by 4. It is and in the value though, which is a little bit odd. I wouldn't expect it to do an and on the value. Um, so let's have a look at the next one. E623. Again, it's doing an and on the value, so I'm not convinced that's it either. Um, okay. Uh, I will go over um, this collision in the next. Um, well, uh, hopefully, if we get enough time, because we're gonna we're gonna implement the um, we're we're gonna implement the the character movement first, um, and then if we have time, we'll look at adding collision in. So I'll go over what we're doing, what we're looking for here, in a bit more detail, and show you how how I go about doing it. Um, Okay. Um, okay, so I guess what we can start looking for now is some zero page lookups for that value. So we know it's in 7C, player X. Uh, zero page loading, there is a 5, I think. That's my opcodes. A. Five zero page, yep. Um, oh, it's there as well. Damn it. So let's see. Ooh, it's not getting it from there. It could be using. Oh, there we go. Load X A6, and I'm guessing A7. Huh. Interesting. Make sure that was correct. Yeah. Interesting how the Y is first and then the X. I don't know why that is. Um, let's have a look for 7B, maybe. Yeah, okay. Let's have a look there. No one. 6, 9. Yeah, 6, 9, 1. So take the Y position of the player and compare it with the value in D8 indexed with X. Where is it getting the X from? Uh, da, da, da. Anything. This is probably being jumped to directly somewhere. Six. No. Okay. No dex. Increase X. Branch not equal. Go back here. It's coming in here, it looks like. Uh, let's have a look what's in D8. Well, there's nothing in here. Now, it could be that these... Uh, see, it is putting something in there now. This looks like it's the edge of the screen, maybe. Because 32... Um, Thirty-two is the, the top border of the screen. But I notice, actually, there's these these things come across the screen, these values are changing, so there is some kind of comparison of the Y. This could be what's doing the 
Um, sprite to sprite collision lookups. Uh, A69D. Compare. If it's the va so if the Y value matches the Y value, some of these Y values, then we go to here. And then we load 6F. Let's have a look at 6F, that's this value here. What does this do as we move around? So that doesn't seem to do anything. Uh, it's not changing when things are coming on the screen. It's still not changing. Okay. So this this looks suspicious. This this looks like it's doing something to do with the collision. Because um, if we look at these values here from D8, it's indexed with X, so it, it could be it could be any number of these, but I think this could be a sprite list. Uh, some values of sprites, because you see as these sprites move, these values change quite a lot. And these seem to be Y values. When they stop moving in the Y, these values seem to stop changing. It's only when they start moving up and down that they change. So I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking this A69D, where is that? That's here. thinking there's something in here is to do with the uh, collision but that's twice I've seen this FF80 so let's go and have a look there see what we see going on this is where the the disassembly is really useful because you can see what's going on in the memory you, you don't have to kind of you know it's a live live monitor of the memory so you see these values are updating as things move around the screen. Um, they don't seem to be doing very much. They're not changing, really. Um, I mean, these ones are, are a little bit... We've also got a subtract zero here, which would imply that at this point here, a carry flag could or could not be set and it's there's some kind of dependency here on that so maybe let's have a look at B7 uh, again anybody has any ideas please feel free to to chime in this is uh, oh god I've just gone and changed some random memory again I think it's to do with the sprites because that seems to be going crazy so I don't think it's too much worry um, this is a this is an experimental stream. This is about us kind of working together to figure these things out. Um, oh, actually, this kind of looks like the sort list. I don't know if I pause that. Oh, it is. Yeah. So we were talking about um, sprites being sorted, and I think that's what we're seeing here. So B zero. Is the list of sprites it is indeed 24 sprites as we counted at the beginning and this is telling us um, the order of the sprites so sprite five six seven now this is telling us and these locations uh, are these indexes this is the y order of the sprites and so we'll see as we change they go round and round and here they're in perfect order almost And then I'm guessing these are the X and Y's up here of these sprites. Something along those lines. These could be pointers, I guess. Um, interesting. Yeah, the um, this this routine here. Uh, where was it? Uh, A six nine one. This one. You see what called it, yeah. So let's have a look back where this. Is. So I think it, this is the entry point because uh, we've got an RTS here. So this would imply that this is an entry point A699. Don't see anything directly there. So let's have a look for where that's been called. Uh, what's it? 99A6. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Okay, so not that. Is there a jump to it? Because it could be that it's jumping to it as we talked about um, ranch addresses. Uh, oh, that's an interesting one. Look at that. So that's a, accessing a zero page address, but it's not using zero page addressing. Interesting. <coughs> um. Okay, so let's try. Let's try going to. Uh, where was it again? I've lost it. Let's try doing the line A699. Wait. Am I looking in the right place? I'm completely lost again there. That was the comparison. That was a comparison. No, that was the comparison. We wanted to see where this code was called. We were checking for. Oh, do you know what it is? If you look at the look here, because I've started going to an address, it's got a six nine nine there. It's actually a six eight one I'm looking for. Ah, it's still not there anyway. So let's try A686. Still nothing. A68, well, oh, there's a branch here. Um, and that's loading a value from FD50. Uh, it's loading this value at the moment and then decreasing. But this could be. Let's have a look. Oh, this seems to be sprite locations as well. So we're not seeing anything. Then we see stuff come on. Ah, I can see what's happened. <coughs> so, let me pause. So it looks like um, this block here seems to be the X positions of these sprites. And this bit here seems to be the Y positions. So if you if you watch um, when I start again, you'll see the Y positions don't change very much. But these tend to stay fairly fairly static. Whereas these are starting high and then going low. I think these are X positions. So this is looking FD50, which is these ones here. What are those? These are sprite types. So this is this is looking at uh, some kind of type, enemy type, um, at FD50. Um, comparing it to seven, branch of carry set. So if it's above seven, it's going to A681, which is here. Which is then grabbing some more data. Um, I noticed that the power ups were less. So it must be things above seven things above type 7 are uh, enemies also if you look here oops look here we've got six five and five I think this is six this is five this is five so I think anything six or below is some kind of power up I'm pretty sure if I shoot one of these it will change to a different number uh, let's, let's die and do it again Okay, so I think if I shoot. So we saw six, five, and five. If I shoot one of these so that appears as something else and pause, uh, t -t -t -t. we've now got one. One, six, and five. I don't know why we've still got a six and five, but things definitely seem to have changed a little bit. I think these are, are to do with these pickups, so I'm pretty sure if I pick one of those up, I 
okay some of them had changed but now we've got enemies coming on the screen so we can see four enemies and we have indeed got four numbers above seven so this is this is definitely a681 is saying i found an enemy um x is x is the index of that so x x is our index into the objects that are on screen so let's work out what ff80 is so that's this area uh, we can see we've got I'm not sure what these are. They don't look to be X positions or Y positions. Oh no, that's the wrong place, sorry, FF80. Okay, we've not seen anything here, but here's those, or is it these ones, 44. Check something. Uh, to here. So the pointers are at 3.9, so it's not that. I was just trying to see if it was the pointer for these sprites. It doesn't seem to be. Um. Okay, let's, let's press play, see what we can see happening. Not an awful lot going on down here, actually. Um, I'm seeing quite a lot of sprites but not a lot of action here there's a lot of 20s appearing not sure what those are okay this could be a state thing so my guess is that these are kind of object states and so this is checking if if the state is zero as in inactive or something then go to this address and that would kind of yeah, that would seem about right because that's going back to our original loop. So it's just saying, don't do anything. It's got an inactive state. FF94, um, that's this block from here onwards. Let's look what these do. Unfortunately, it can be quite boring doing a lot of this stuff. I, I realize this probably isn't the most exciting stream for people, but those who are interested in the hacking side of things, this can be quite enlightening. Um, I know I know if you don't know assembly it could also be quite daunting but I'm hoping that our Saturday streams will get more and more people to understand what's going on here. Um, anyway I should be paying attention. So we've got four enemies on screen. I'm gonna pause six ten enemies on screen and we're seeing one two three four five six some high numbers there a couple of fours and fives I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> oh, Andy, seriously. <laughs> Deary me. A6A5. Okay, we've got some kind of comparison going on here. And again, we get into this. I, I strongly suspect this is to do with, with collision. Um, A69D. I, I kind of want to mess around with this block of code here and see what happens um, because it kind of looks we've got 7b we had 7b which was y position and 7c <coughs> Um, I don't have any decided yet steps. It's entirely down to patrons and um, and subs. So if you want to, uh, if you want to pick the next game that we do, just uh, there should be a link to my patron down here somewhere um, on my screen. Um, you can also check my Twitter for for the links and sign up for patron, and you can um, you can. Uh, you can you can select a game or if you sub um, up there somewhere wherever it is I can't do this up there on the stream um, then th those people get to pick otherwise I will I will kind of judge um, based on people's feedback what we should what we should do next or I'll probably take a pick myself I, I kind of I make the threat that we will do airwolf if, if nobody picks so that should uh, <laughs> encourage people to do. Um, yeah, Nebulous would be a good one actually. Uh, as soon as the entire game is built around that effect, it would <laughs> it would be interesting to see exactly how they did that. 
I'm not tuning into Airwolf. Yeah, that's why I make the threat to make people <laughs> make people try other other things. Um, okay. I can't, I do want to mess around with this code, so let's have a look at how we can mess around with this. This comparison's interesting. So, what would happen if we changed that to? Let's mess with the overflow flag. So, destroying Airwolf would definitely get some viewers. Yeah, I'm. I might start. Um, Preparing a little bit more for these streams just to kind of speed up some of the searching for through stuff. Um, not too much because I, I like the kind of exploring. I like this side of things, but um, just to find some of the basics like infinite lives, I can I can probably dig some of those out, get those working, um, and then explain what I did rather than spend half the stream looking for those. Um, like with Airwolf, that just that took for, uh, not Airwolf um, thrust. We spent so long actually doing the basics, um, we didn't really have a lot of time to look at anything else. So, um, and it helps me get familiar with it as well. I thought it was really good. The the, the best Airwolf style game, in my opinion, on um, the C64 is Fort Apocalypse. Um, challenge accepted. Yeah, I don't know how I would do that. I don't know how I would do that. It'd probably just pause the game and leave the music on. That's all you need to do. The music's fine. It's just the rest of the game's brutal and not very fun. If you haven't played Fort Apocalypse, I would definitely recommend it. It's a very, very good game. It's, I think it's a little bit older than Airwolf. It's one of the first games, actually. <coughs> but it's a very, very good game. And um, it's, in my opinion, much, much better than Airwolf. Um, okay. I'm going to try changing this. So we've got a comparison here. I'm going to try changing that. Um, so there is this overflow flag. Um, I still, to be honest, to this day, I still don't know properly how to use it. But one thing I do know is it's almost always at zero. Um, I mean, you shouldn't rely on it being zero, but for the, just for the purpose of this, I'm just going to try um, using it to, to skip over this this branch on my condition rather than the condition of something else so um i'm gonna look for branch of overflow clear and um and the opposite of it and the branch of overflow set of course um and i'm gonna i'm gonna try each one of these one at a time so i'll try that one first 70 695 Five F zero. I'm going to change that to seven zero, and just want to see what happens. So now um, I wait for my invulnerability to run out. Let's see if that's made a difference. No, I'm still crashing into things. Still hitting, hitting that. Okay. Yeah, I would like to do some Atari. I, I, I'm actually, I'm very interested in doing an Atari Lynx game. Um, I really, I, I was kind of envious of people who had the Lynx. I mean, having used one again recently, they, they were obviously not as great as your, your mind uh, tells you they were. But um, I would like to do an Atari game, Atari Lynx specifically. Uh, I wonder that one. One hardware that I don't fancy doing on 6502 is the Atari 2600. It's, it's, I mean, we think the 64 is limited. My God, that thing is is just brutal. Okay, I'm going to try changing this to a uh, bunch of overflow clear instead. So that's my old codes. Uh, 50. Okay. I don't think it's going to make any difference. I, I'm not entirely sure what this is doing, but um, we will find out. Uh, still allowing me to pick up, so I don't think it's that. Let's see if it lets me crash into things. Yeah, I'm still crashing into things. Uh, okay, there was another comparison, wasn't there? A little bit down here. Or was it a little bit up? This one here. Oh no, that's just 
comparing yeah oh interestingly so we had let's put this one back to branch of equal which was I think it was F0 was it yeah F0 so we noted that um, this was checking kind of the difference between a power up and an enemy so I wonder if we if we change that to a high value that actually everything will be seen as uh, where is it? Is it that one? Yeah, everything will be seen as a power up instead. So if I'm going to put that in like, uh, let's make it FF. Might as well. Um, oops. Let's see what happens there. We saw in the blocker code the the code that was kind of defining seemed to be defining the types of these. Um, the numbers below seven seem to be power-ups. Um, it's not made any difference to the collision though. So that's not affecting it. Okay. Let's put that back to zero seven. So this is all about kind of messing around and, and changing this code until we find something that, oh, what have I done there? Oh, no, it's fine. Uh, till we find something that actually has the desired effect. Oh, can I actually type in there? Oh, you are kidding. Okay, it's not quite... Where's my hash? Okay. It's not using my keyboard layer, but wow, okay, didn't know I could do that. <coughs> yeah. And the 65CO2, um, which is a kind of, it's almost a 16-bit version, but it still uses the 8-bit addressing mode, uh, which is in the PC Engine, which is also something else I'd like to have a go at. Um, I, I only really recently saw PC Engine stuff, partly why Parasol Stars was something I started working on, um, because I'd never really come across the PC Engine properly before, and when I saw Parasol Stars, which I hadn't played when I was younger, I was absolutely amazed at, at how good it was, especially on the PC Engine. Um, so yeah, I'd like to play with a PC Engine, it's, it looks like interesting architecture. 6809, is that a Motorola CPU? 6809, sounds like it. Is that the 8-bit um, version of the, of the 68000? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna try so the other thing we're doing here is we're cycling through 15 things and decreasing and, and stopping so I'm gonna try um... actually do you know what I'm just gonna try exiting out of this and then I'm gonna change it back to load X after this so so when it jumps to this routine it's just gonna immediately exit and see what that does I still can't pick things up. I still can pick things up, sorry. Um, and I still try, I still die on things, okay. <laughs> oh, pseudo 16 bit, interesting. Oh, I can't believe I can type code in here, that just makes my life so much easier. Uh, oh, although that's done some weird stuff now. I don't know what I've just done. Uh, scroll off, come back, see what it does. Um, okay, you actually have to type the exact command in. Impressive conversion. Yeah, I've never even I've never even seen a Vetrex properly in person. I've uh, I played um, a very long time ago. I must have been four or five, very very young, um, a racing game in the arcade which was obviously built using similar uh, vector based kind of um, vector display screens and I was I was blown away by it, it was so smooth and it looked so clear, there was no pixelation, it was all these just very nice bright lines and it just looked amazing. <coughs> I wish I could remember what it was called but um, yeah, it was, it was just really simple. It was just lots of lines flying at you very quickly, but it looked like a really smooth scrolling road. It was it was great. Um, 
Uh, okay, I, I think I'm gonna call it here, guys. Um, we've done quite a bit. We've we've kind of we've di dissected more than we've actually hacked this time. Um, I think next time um, I would like to look at uh, maybe a platform game, um, something because we've looked at two shooter games now. It'd be nice to look at. Uh, a platform game. I'm going to suggest uh, Creatures actually as the as the next game, uh, the original Creatures, uh, not Creatures 2, um, just because it's one of my personal favourites and I, I really, I, I'd really like to look into it in more detail. However, if somebody on Patreon or through subs uh, suggests something different, we will of course do that. Um, patrons come first. Um, yeah, so thanks a lot guys for coming along tonight. I'm sorry we couldn't get more done. As I said, this is always going to be an experimental stream. Um, it's been nice to dig into it. It's been nice to see you all. There's been a lot of people here tonight. Uh, really good to see Thalamus join in as well. Um, felt a little bit of pressure to uh, to work with um, uh, work with the publisher in the background, but um, it was it was good fun and, and it's been really nice. Um, there'll be another stream on Saturday, uh, the usual uh, game stream. We'll be looking at adding the character sprite in, uh, getting them moving around the screen. And as I say, if we've got time, we'll, we'll look into um, some new addressing modes and using them to create uh, some uh, sprite to background collision. Uh, we won't do sprite to sprite yet. That, that will come when we start looking at the multiplexer, but we'll, we'll start creating a sprite to background collision if we've got time. Um, who knows the way those streams go it, it could it could take all streams just to get one character in and moving around we shall see um okay cool cheers guys let's find someone to raid uh any suggestions guys anybody can see it any commodore streamers on or good retro streamers oh zork's on let's go and raid zork it's gotta be zork he would raid us so let's raid him uh Zorkan. remember how to spell his name Borchen Himma, okay, so Borchen Himma. Cool. Yeah, so thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for coming along. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you all on uh, Saturday. Uh, and if not, we'll be continuing this again um, on uh, Thursday. It's going to be an every Thursday thing. So, um, yeah, hopefully, I'll see you then, guys. Take care.